It's on and popping from Birmingham, Alabama. This isn't your average in-state rivalry. It's the Magic City Classic here. And oh, baby, it's all the way live. This one dates back to 1940. Alabama A&M actually has the advantage in this series. And let me tell you, folks flock to the Magic City. 75,000 spectators expected inside and outside the stadium. This has been a week long of festivities. Let's hear what the coaches had to say earlier in the week. From day one, January when I got hired, coach, you got to win the Classic. You got to win the Classic. To play in one of the biggest classics that I've, I've ever experienced and ever been a part of. Uh, it's unbelievable. It's the, it's the greatest classic uh, on earth. Mr. Maynard, how you doing there, sir? But it's been 362, and I can't wait to get to 365. <laughs> it's been a whole year, brother. And all of y'all, I consider all of y'all my friends. So I'm going to thank all my friends and Coach Ely. <laughs> I picture you all through my house. <laughs> Coach Maynard and I, we will battle like I don't know what when we line down on the field. We expect a great game. It's always been a great game. It was a great game last year. Uh, we was fortunate enough to make a couple more plays down the stretch and pull the game out. Welcome to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. All the trash talking has taken place throughout the week. Now it's time for the ball game between Alabama A&M and Alabama State as we say hello and welcome in with the former Howard University and NFL quarterback Jay Walker. I'm Tiffany Green. Quite honestly, I don't know if there is much for me to say, so I'm going to step out of the way and give it to you. I don't even want to talk. I want to play. And if you're a player, this is a game that you want to play in. You've got the largest crowd you're going to see. The best college football environment in the country right now this weekend is here in Birmingham, Alabama. The rain's not going to stop the energy and enthusiasm for this game because this game means something to the state, to the teams, and the program. And when you look at last year's matchup, it was Connell Maynard's debut in this coaching season. He won his first Magic City Classic, and he has a Keel Glass. Thank for that. And they're going to need that. You know, Keel Glass is a guy that has to throw the ball. Ball. When you're a quarterback playing for a former college call quarterback like Connell Maynard, he expects perfection. Last season, Akil Glass had a great game in the Classic. That's why the Bulldogs were able to become victorious. Today with the weather conditions, though, I don't know if Glass is going to be the most important player for the Bulldogs. I think that's going to be four-year starting running back Jordan Bentley. Bentley's that cowbell. He's the guy you can hang your hat on. Smartest player on the offense. Steady, consistent, won't hurt you. And if the offensive line does their job, he can take over this football game for the Bulldogs. Bentley, the senior, is the third leading rusher in the SWAC. As you look at Alabama State, well, it all falls in the hands of Ezra Gray, Duran Bell. They're going to be the ones in the backfield, and they're excited to have Duran Bell back after injury. Bell's a special talent, highly anticipated when he transferred into Alabama State. In his opening game, he delivered big time versus University of Alabama Birmingham when they almost pulled off the upset. If he can show up today in a big way, Alabama State is going to have a good opportunity of winning in these type of conditions. Mind you, it was right here in Legion Field that he went off for 112 yards. Donald Hill Ely in his third season as the Alabama State head coach. Right now, he's trying to get on the winning side in the Magic City Classic, currently sitting at 1-1. One and one. You know, what's been so exciting about this Classic is the fact that, you know, these coaches, you heard them, leading up to this ball game and all the fun fodder going back and forth between the two but we just know exactly what this means he said you know what you throw everything out the window that's usually what happens in rivalry games and you're going to have to fight for all four quarters it's going to be a brawl back and forth and i've said it before many times before and this is an old school game i've seen the classic get coaches hired and i've also seen it get them fired depending on the team performance. Alabama State won the toss. They deferred, and a and will get their offense going behind the leader in the SWAC in passing yards and Akil Glass, a young man who has done a great job, the junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. He has been stellar so far this season. High expectations came along with Akil Glass going into the season, and he's delivered. He's had a great season so far for Alabama A&M. This offense scores points. 
it's a matter of when they turn the ball over, they've had some costly turnovers that have cost them a couple of victories this season. This Bulldogs offense putting up 32 points a game, close to 33 a game. Glass coming off a 225-yard performance a couple of weeks ago after both teams were off last week in preparation for this Magic City Classic. Flea Flicker. Flea Flicker, and here it is, Akio Glass with the man. And Ibrahim could not get to it. Had some contact in that secondary with Natron Culpepper. But you see Coach Maynard talking about it. I agree with the call. They came out anticipating going for the Flea Flicker if the rain wasn't going, and they're calling it an uncatchable pass. Was there contact? Yes, a lot of contact. But if you're glass, keep the ball in play, and you get the penalty. You know me. I don't think you get a penalty when you throw a ball four yards outside the field of play. Once more this time, the handoff to Jordan Bentley. Bentley still on his feet, and he's wrapped up very quickly. Urshad Davis, one of the black jerseys, and a pickup of zero. So now brings up third and ten. After you go for the flea flick of the home run ball on first down, now they're going to show you their game plan, which is going to be given a heavy dose of Jordan Bentley. But this is one of the luxuries that Alabama A&M has. It's third and ten, but Glass is a downfield deep thrower. They can pick up third and long situations. Empty backfield for the junior quarterback. Glass taking a look, completes the pass. And up ahead, Jeffrey Hill in on the tackle. Keep going, keep going, well, young man. I that? like that yak. Did that second surge pick up a first down? He was tackled clearly five yards up the field, but then the offensive line took advantage of the situation and got that surge to pick up a first down. You see it here. He's stopped well short, but look at the offensive line going to get it. Taylor Sanders, number 65, mixing it up, pushing the pile for the first down. Swings it out to Terrell Gardner, and Gardner is pushed out of bounds, a positive yardage on first down. Well, Akil Glass, we mentioned his passing numbers in the swag, better than 2,000 so far this season. And when we talked to his coach, you mentioned Connell Manor, a former quarterback, he said, look, I would grade him out at about an A- minus so far this season. Well, he wants perfection. That's what we talked about. He's a guy that wants perfection and playing quarterback form. You learn a lot, but there's a lot of pressure to go along with it, but it only makes you a better player. And Keel Glass, just a junior, is having a good season. The handoff to Bentley. Bentley with great vision and moving ahead. The first down and more continuing to move those legs. Jordan Bentley is just one of those guys who can do it all for you and does it the right way. And this is the classic. You're seeing Alabama a and understand what's at stake. You see the contact wrap him up, but he's still going to keep his legs going with the balance. You run, for, you run a little bit harder in games like this. You lean a little bit more forward in games like this. Pick up of 13. They give it back to him once more. The civil engineering major out of Gunnersville, Alabama. Well, Jordan Bentley thus far, 662 yards on the year. Most touchdowns, scoring touchdowns in the SWAC with nine. He's having himself a great final campaign with the Bulldogs. Play action. Glass stands in there, takes the hit, and the pass incomplete to Abdul. Fatih Ibrahim and a penalty marker is down. So we'll wait to get the call from Jesse Harris. Ineligible downfield, offense number 87. That's a five yard penalty, still second down. And coming on the tight end, Anthony Howard. Yeah, they must be saying he was covered up because he's a tight end. He's eligible, but he must have been covered up by the formation. And look at Akil Glass. You see him taking a hit in the pocket, trying to deliver the football. That's why they like to have big quarterbacks, six feet, two inches, 220 pounds, well put together. Now second and long. Glass hands it off to Jordan Bentley. And Bentley, you feel like every time he touches the ball, you know you feel like he's going to get some positive yards. Positive yards. 
he's not doesn't have that type of home run hitting ability to take it to the house, even though he's done that in his career. But his numbers are what they are. He's very good, very dependable, averages about four and a half yards per carry. Get him close to the goal line, he can punch it over for the touchdown for you. But you got to like him. He's been that guy that's been Mr. Reliable this whole time in Huntsville, Alabama, Alabama a &M. Well, when he came into the league, he was the swag freshman of the year. Now third and nine for the Bulldogs. He flanks out to the bottom of your screen, Dust Bentley. Glass with time and just miscommunication there on the route with Ibrahim. And Glass seems to be a little off, not as sharp. He's been rushing. Alabama State is bringing a three-man pass rush, and he's forcing the ball, getting rid of it earlier. He's got more time to settle in the pocket and let the routes develop. Maybe he's got a little bit of a Magic City jitters, <laughs> so to speak. Well, you said he came up big last year against the Hornets. So Alabama A&M elects to punt it, but just before then, Alabama State calls a timeout. So, Jay, in, in your mind, j just leading up to it, I mean, this is an early, you know, game prediction, but what does each team need to do? How do you like these two teams matching up? Alabama a &M has to show that they can run the football. In these type of conditions, it's very windy out there. We know they can feature Bentley, but they want to go to glass. Deep down, they want to throw the football. That's what Coach Maynard does. They light it up in the airways over 300 yards per game passing. Is the running game good enough to rely on? Alabama State, just which team's going to show up? Is it the team that we've seen can play with anybody? Or is it also the team that we've seen can lose to anybody as well? But I think Alabama State is trying to bring up the intensity level. They're the more physical ball club. And normally in these type of conditions, physicality wins football games. Spencer Corey on to punt. Junior receives it and just able to get it away. Kobe Crabb calls for the fair catch. And those windy conditions really move the ball around. But you go back to that pressure. Alabama State almost got to the punt. Yeah, missed opportunity. I think with a little better jump off, he would have gotten that. I don't know. He think he thought he was going to get there as quick. Unblocked up the middle. Alabama A&M needs to correct their punt coverage. So now we'll get a chance to see Alabama State's offense get going. And we expected to see Kaderis Davis, the quarterback who started off the season after Daryl Pearson went down. He had a back bruise against Alcorn State. And the handoff on the first play from scrimmage was to Ezra Gray, but a penalty marker flies out. <laughs> and look, we, we were at Prairie View A&M earlier <laughs> this week on Thursday, and we, we saw a, a flag fest. Holding, 60 offense. That's a 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay first down. So Davis, who normally wears number 12, wearing number two here today. And it backs up the Hornets 10 yards. When you look at a guy like Kadaris Davis from nearby Bessemer, Alabama, right here in this Montgomery, excuse me, Birmingham area, you know, he's a guy who got something going at the start of the season, kind of started to move from a game manager to a quarterback, according to his coaches. And here on his first pass play, ahead to Larry Brown. Larry Brown, a featured tight end in this offense, a guy who had five catches in that game against UAB to start the season. He got off to a strong start. Yeah, and he's a guy, if you're going to have an effective pass attack, show me a tight end that can get open, win the one-on-one -on -one matchups, control the middle of the field, and Larry Brown is starting to emerge as that target for Alabama State. But this is really like, it's a ball control offense. They, they don't want to stretch it downfield too much. They want to control the line of scrimmage, pick you apart a little bit and just control the time of possession and long drives. You don't see that many explosive plays from Alabama State offensively. That pass incomplete to Jihad Booker, now third and short for Donald Hill, Ely's team. And this is what you want to see early on in the obvious pass situation. Does Alabama A&M bring pressure or do they sit back and see if their front four on the defensive line 
can collapse the pocket and force an ill-advised throw. Ball at the 25-yard line of Alabama State rolling to his right and just getting it out of his hands was Davis. Good coverage there. So the punting unit will come on for the Hornets. And they, they brought the pressure. So you're going to see Quintravis Kelly, number 36, inside linebacker, shoot the gap. Misblown blocking assignment by Jordan Williams. Forces Davis to get rid of the ball early. And on comes the punt team. The senior out of Linden, California, Anthony Craven, standing at just about his own 11-yard line. Odalou Hilaire watches it bounce out of bounds. So come back with us to the old gray mare here in the Magic City. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's and in part by Allstate, reminding you that football season is mayhem. Throwback of the bands in the crowd from this Magic City Classic. Alabama A&M's band decided to show up, still awaiting the Alabama State Marching Hornets to come into the stadium. And certainly we mentioned, Jay, wind is a factor here today. And how will that affect Akil Glass, who likes to air it out? If you're a strong arm quarterback, you don't mind the wind. You just have to step into your throws a little bit more. So I think he'll do better than possibly for Darius Davis. Man, wide open. That's Zabrian Moore. Zabrian Moore has nobody around him trying to get the angle. And he's down the sidelines, just tripped up. Touchdown saving tackle by Aaron Pope. You talk about a blown coverage from Alabama State. You see him up top here. They're going to bring the corner off the slot. That means the safety has to get over there and get in position. Safety does not. Two guys go to the inside receiver, and it's a big play for Alabama A&M as Moore almost took it the distance. Correction, that was Urshai Davis who tripped him up before Moore got into the end zone. Call on number one, Jordan Bentley, he's in. <laughs> Alabama A&M on the score first after that big 76-yard reception from Moore. Once Moore took it down the field, here comes Mr. Reliable, Jordan Bentley. Get him the football down by the goal line, and he's going to find a way to put points on the scoreboard. And the Bulldogs take the early lead. Corey on to attempt the extra point. And it's good. Let me tell you, folks, when you've got the SWAC's leading passer sending it to Zabrion Moore, it only took 38 seconds for the Bulldogs to go on the board. Birmingham, Alabama, the central point as the Bulldogs travel down south to the Magic City. About an hour and 15 minutes away from here, Alabama State and Montgomery, the capital city here in Alabama. And that's what, an hour away or so, Jay? I think that's what makes this game special. Yeah. Geographically, both schools are like an hour away from Birmingham. Birmingham's a big city in Alabama. And you talk about Montgomery's not that far from here. Huntsville's not that far. They converge every season. Last weekend in October, I circled it on my calendar. You should circle it on yours. And m after that quick strike, set to kick it off. Spencer Corey as Rick Gray is back deep with this one. is short. And some good running room up ahead. And a solid return for Dante Norris. Going back to that touchdown. And I was trying to figure out pass. what happened here. And I'm going to tell you the responsibility is on the cornerback. You know why? You have to get out of this. When they go empty backfield, pull off the corner blitz. So you've got too many receivers out there. They called a cornerback blitz. But when Alabama a came with the empty backfield, you've got to check out of that and get to quarter coverage. That's why they gave up the big play. Mental breakdown. Not necessarily a physical mistake, but it's a mental breakdown when that cornerback 
doesn't get out of the cat blitz. Man in motion, that's Michael Jefferson. The handoff to Gray. Gray cutting back upfield. Gray Bumble. loses the football. Fumble. Who's going to get to it? Upside. It looked like Alabama AM did recover, and it's second down. Just short of the sticks, boy, Ezra Gray. The, the extra efforts are going to occur in this game on the run, but you see here, it doesn't secure the football. Ball's just tipped a little bit by Armani Holloway, number 20. And Gray, very fortunate that ball took a lucky bounce, and the Hornets keep possession. Second and short, the handoff, and here... Out of the backfield is Duran Bell. Duran Bell, good change of pace. The South Florida transfer, he picks up the first down, but you see the explosiveness on that quick first step. Oh, he's got that cut ability and running behind the Browns. You know, the bad, bad Browns on that left side of the line. We're talking about DeAndre Brown and Leeward Brown. Look at them sealing on that left side. That's a nice big hole to run through. And all you have to do is have good vision and you're gonna pick up big yardage. Bell stays in the backfield. And the pass over to Jefferson. The double pass here. And just off cue. Well, Jimmy Farrell finds his way in the ball game. That was a double pass. You like that, Jay? I do because I like that both coaches were being honest to me in terms of what their approach to the game was going to be. Alabama and said, we're going to start the game off with a flea flicker. They did. Donald Hill Ely said, we got a double pass coming for him, Sky. And they, they ran it. Now, neither one of them worked for both teams, but I appreciate that, you know, they respect me enough to give me the truth and tell it like it is. Second and long from the 45 of AM, the handoff. Here's Bell once more trying to kick it to the outside, and he's tackled and brought down by Tawiley Wilson. Pick up of six. And take a look at the pulling guard here, the center here. You're going to see him. Get around and get after. That's what you want. Just get in the way, seal the edge, and allow Bell to make opponents miss. Now that Misty Rain coming back down on third and four. You got to think about ball security. We saw Ezra Gray already fumble it on this possession. And it's two down territory already. You're down by seven in this football game. You're already across midfield. If they can pick up any type of positive yardage, I think they would go for it on fourth down. Here's Bell. Bell continuing to shed tacklers and finding ways to stay on his feet. We'll see where he spots him. He's going to be close to the first down. Yeah, the spot's going to be the key. And the official that's in charge of spotting the football, he got taken out of bounds. So they're going with the far sideline officials spot of the football. Looks like it's going to be enough for the first down. Well, Duran Bell, who was out for two games, injured his shoulder against Grambling. They're happy to have him back on the field and giving them another option in the backfield. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're calling a timeout to challenge that spot. The play is under so they're going to review this one to see where the ball is spotted as that misty rain starting to get a little bit heavier coming down inside the stadium. So they have the ball spotted on the 35-yard line. Where does he go out of ball? Oh, well, well short. short. Oh, yeah. by three or four yards. Yeah. <laughs> so good use of a timeout to challenge that spot. We knew the official got out of play with the contact on the sideline. They're going to have to figure this out exactly where they spot him, but I definitely think he's going to be short and it'll be a fourth down. Well, this is an Alabama State team who is – Welcoming in a new offensive coordinator, Joe Blackwell, trying to get things going, came over from South Carolina State, coaching in his first Magic City Classic. He spent some time in the MEAC with both the Bulldogs in Orangeburg as well as Norfolk State. But he says, you know what, I'm not sure what to expect here from this Magic City Classic, but I've heard a whole lot about it. Keeping the ball on the ground may change his, well, excuse me, the rain rather may change his game plan, right? And every coach we talk to says, Every time they say, oh, yeah, we're ready for the class. we got to bl block out the distractions and stick with the game plan. And then we talk to them the next year, and they were like, oh, it was much bigger than I thought. <laughs> that, this game is huge. So it comes down to whatever team can just focus and focus on the fundamentals. Don't get caught up in the hype and the excitement. Do your job. And those have been the teams that have been exceptional, that have had exceptional success in this football game.
And Jay, I'm going to say, just looking at that review a couple of times, it seems to be pretty clear cut to me, although they're conferring a little bit longer. And I think Connell Maynard's like, what's up? Yeah, you know, that was a good job of, hey, saying you want to challenge the spot. Uh, I still think that Alabama State will end up going for it on fourth down just because of where they have the ball in the football field. You see a good look there at Granville Eastman, the defensive coordinator. For After further review, the runner was short of the line the game. The ball will be placed at the 37-yard line. It'll be fourth and two for Alabama State from the 37-yard line. Will the clock operator please reset the game clock to 725? So if you're Donahue, Ely, you're saying, let's go for it. Oh, yeah. It's the classic. And outside of it being the classic, where you are on the field, you're out of field goal range, particularly in these type of conditions. So keep your offense there. If you punt the ball into the end zone, what's your net gain? Your gain with 18 yards. So go for it here. Tell your team, you challenge your offensive line. Hey, if we can't get two yards, a yard and a half that we need, that's on us. And what I love is sometimes you don't have to say anything. You can watch the pitchers and let them do the talking. And if you could capture that at home, what Connell Maynard was saying right there is he is a very charismatic coach. What you think he's uh, fussing about, about that? It's not a timeout for them. We won the challenge. You got the spotless play. They, they were allowing them to huddle on the field for another two minutes to call the play. When it doesn't work like that in the rules of replay. The Hornets this season, two for nine on fourth downs. Line of game is a 35. Duran Bell, he had somebody in the backfield and he's brought down. Big stop by the Bulldogs defense. They ran a counter in short yarded situation. I'm just assuming from the footwork of the quarterback. I don't think in short yards you want your quarterback turning his back to the, ah, he ran the wrong way. He opened up the wrong way. That wasn't a counter. Davis just opened up to the left. And that play was designed to go to the right with the pulling guard. Amir Barry had the first chance to get to him, but wrapped up surely by Quintravius Kelly. Bulldogs starting on the ground. This time moving ahead is Gary Quarles. Quarles, the sophomore out of Cottondale, Alabama. Five foot six sophomore, picked up seven. A little bit of a hurry up, no huddle for Alabama a &M. Keeping it on the ground with Quarles this time. Brought down by Natron Culpepper. Loss of two. Saw the play clock almost expired, so Alabama AM calls the timeout. Connell Maynard in his second season as head coach down in Huntsville. Overall record you see there, but he said, Look, this season I want the guys to show me something. Okay, I'm from Missouri, the show me state. I want y'all to show me something this season. After he came back and had a winning season last year, first time in six years for the program. Surprised a lot of people. And I remember when they made the hire, I felt happy for the fans down in Huntsville about what was coming their way. I didn't know what the win-loss record was going to be, but I knew you were going to see that. that. He can put points on the board, total offensive number. He's an offensive mind, and I think those fans of Bulldog football desperately just wanted to see an offense. For years, their offense was kind of dormant. Even when they were winning championships, it was because the defense was so good. He's brought some excitement to football in Huntsville, Alabama. And it's starting to come down. Yeah, it's starting to pick up for sure. Third and five. Glass rolling to his left with time and tries to make a tough throw. And out of bounds, incomplete to Ibrahim. Keenan Isaac was there on the coverage. And now I think the, the rain is enough of a factor where you have to pay attention to detail in your special teams, in your offensive uh, ball selection, their play calling selection.
it becomes a battle of field position in games like this. We saw Alabama State's true freshman, Colton Adams, almost get to a punt earlier in this game. We'll see what type of pressure they bring here with Kobe Crabb standing back inside the 25. Gets it away, and Crabb calls for a fair catch. 22-yard punt, no return. Come back with us to Birmingham. Looking smooth. Feed the whole team with Hampton by Hilton's newly reimagined free hot breakfast. Mr. Davis? Hampton by Hilton. College football stays here. It just got extra cloudy here in Birmingham. The rain continuing to come down. We'll see what happens throughout the rest of the game and this season as we take a look at the SWAC standings. Alabama State at 2-1 and one in the East. Alabama A&M at an even 500 as they're all chasing all corn State as the defending SWAC East and SWAC champions. So this becomes almost like an elimination game. Whichever team loses, that'll be their second loss in conference. And it's pretty tough to think that Alcorn's going to drop that many. So they need to get the W. Oh, look who decided to join hey, us, hey, Tim. Hey. They got the rain gear ready. They made it on into the stands. The Marching Hornets are in the building. And look, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that I'm sitting in the press box right now instead of one of those loyal band members or fans out in the elements. I, that, that's your opinion, but like I said before, oh, that's, I wish that's I was good down football. on the field. Oh, yeah, I'm a okay. football player. We want to be on the field. Okay. You, you know what? You can broadcast from down there if you like, Jay. I mean, uh, that's not we, got options. we got options. <laughs> <laughs> no option and really nowhere to go for Ezra Gray as the Bulldogs defense swarmed in. Marquise Price was in on the stop. And this is one where you you wonder about your weather preparation. Like I tell a story when I, my first collegiate start at Howard, we played in a monsoon in Morehouse. My only problem was I'm from California. I never played in the rain before. <laughs> so I struggled mightily. And then after that, they practiced and made me throw foot, wet footballs all season long. And I didn't get comfortable playing in the rain until probably my third or fourth start. That being said, I don't know how often these teams have played and practice in the rain. Davis steps up in the pocket, See, lets it rainbow. go, and again, <laughs> yeah, looked like that one just may have gotten away from him. Yeah, that was one that just, when he was scrambling, it just slipped out. He tried to flick his wrist. And when you you have to have big hands to play in the rain, to be an effective passer in the rain. The larger the hands, the better you are. But you'll see it's a good job of stepping up in the pocket. But look at this. This ball just, it just sails on. It slips out of his hands. Jay, when you were in that monsoon, did, did you melt in the rain? <laughs> Oh, I got him back the next year, <laughs> but uh, I became an effective passer in the rain, but it does take practice and you have to grip the ball a little bit harder and at the top. The punt and it's blocked. Alabama A&M gets to it and who recovers it? They'll have great field position as the pressure. You talked about special teams, Jay. You got to have it airtight. Yep, in a battle field position, you have to Pay attention to detail and come right up the middle. Two white jerseys. That is poor punt protection. Nowhere for the punter to get this ball off. Craven tries to quick step it, but great play by the special teams of Alabama A&M. Elijah Perez credit him with the punt block. So excellent field position now as A&M's offense comes back onto the field, but they're already in the red zone. Jordan Bentley time. And a timeout taken by the Bulldogs before the snap. You talked about Jordan Bentley time. Carnell Maynard, I, I, I enjoy going to shots of him on the sideline just because he is so animated. One of the most competitive people I've met in, in my life. Like, he's so competitive, he thinks he was a better quarterback than I was. Well, but did, I, did you I, guys that's wait not a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my bro. It's not debatable. He played in the but, Arena League. Give him some credit. He did, and he was a 
uh, black college All-American, MEAC Offensive Player of the Year, and super competitive guy. And even in golf, one of the best golfers you're going to meet on the golf circuit there. He thinks he can beat you in everything. And he kind of instills that in his football clubs, wherever he's been, whether it's been Winston-Salem State or here at Hampton, and now Alabama A&M. And it could continue to get messy as the rain is not letting up. Glass decides to pass it. And a Howard. Yeah, and you start to lose plays like that. You lose your accuracy a little bit when you're playing in the rain. A touch pass, very difficult to do in the rain. And that was one of the situations where you need to have some touch on the ball. Second and ten. This time the handoff to Bentley, and Bentley is stopped immediately. Joshua Hill was one of the first guys there along with Christian Clark. Big Christian Clark. Big number 94. 6'1", 308. That's a lot. That's, <laughs> That's a, a wide pound. load That's right there. That's a 400-pound run stuffer. And look at him. When he gets his hands on you, the play is over. As you mentioned, Hill did a good job coming off the edge. But look at that, man. Yeah. 380. <laughs> Just a low center of gravity, <laughs> that what strong. You call it? <laughs> he just, just a wide load that just plugs up the middle. Anytime you're trying to go somewhere, you're going to see number 94. And that's a run stuffer in, in the college football world, as well as the pros. You need somebody just to clog up the middle. Blitz. Pressure coming. Glass gets it away. Nobody, even on the right side of the field where he was throwing, fourth down. And you have to think. Do they go for it here, or they try to just get some points? Not and it. if you settle for the field goal, then you think to yourself, well, we got the turnover deep in our territory, and we just settle for three. Yeah, the defense for Alabama State did their job forcing this field goal attempt from Alabama A&M. Great job by Travis Pearson, the defensive coordinator, dialing up a little kitchen sink blitz to force Glass to get rid of the football. 32-yard attempt for Spencer Corey. He hit a 37-yarder in his last game against Grambling. And with a flag on the field, we'll see if he moves closer or further away. So they're going to call. They're going to call the intentional grounding. Intentional on glass. grounding. Offense. The quarterback was inside the pocket, and he threw it to an area where there was no receiver. Therefore, it's intentional grounding at the spot of the foul and lost the foul. This is what's going to happen. That's going to move him back. And with these conditions, field goal becomes a little bit more difficult. They bring the blitz in. He's inside the two tackles, in the tackle box. You can't just get rid of the football to nobody. Nobody in that area trying to avoid the sack. That's a good call by the official. So now you push him back. And it's a 42-yarder now against the win. So he's going to really have to step on this. He's 0 for 2 from that distance. Gets it up. Has the leg, but it is no good. So Alabama State coming out with a win there. Their defense holds and it's still 7-0. They're trailing. And take a look at the kick. Let's see the timing was all there, but mentioned kicking it into the wind tried to really step on it and lost a little bit of his accuracy and pulled it to the left and what a great job by Alabama State defense I'm sure coach Don Hill Ely has to be proud of the job his defense did put him in a tough spot he would have been happy if he would have settled with giving up a field goal instead they hold on to just being down by seven so they're a start from their own 25-yard line. Duran Bell in the backfield. And the handoff right up ahead. And Bell continuing to make some cuts. And a good run on first down. Brought down by Breon Austin. So far, time of possession has been pretty balanced between the two teams. But you look at the 16 plays for 113 yards for AM compared to just 35 total yards so far for State. And 
And a marker out. Likely false start. False start. 82 offense. That's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. That one called on the tight end, Moses Marshall. So after that six-yard first down run from Bell, they move back five. And that's something you just can't have there. Moses Marshall, the tight end, on the line of scrimmage. Flinch a little bit early and cost his team five. Davis quickly out to Larry Brown. Brown loses the football as well. Still on the ground, and it's recovered by AM. Joshua Williams recovering the fumble, and again, ball security of great importance for both teams. Alabama State's put it on the ground twice today. Yeah, that's the conditions are going to element that. Actually, starting to tell you how wet it is. Look at this little baby throw to the outside, and he's got the football done secure. Good job of coming over, putting the helmet on the football, knocking it loose from Larry Brown, the tight end. And Alabama AM once again gets the ball in great field position to start a drive. Let's see if they can put some points on the board to capitalize on the great play. Jordan Bentley and Bentley is wrapped up. Rashad Davis is there. And I'll tell you this, if you're Alabama and then what kind of tweak or adjustment do you make seeing that you were even closer and you didn't get anything last time? Well, that was going to be the challenge in this game. In the conditions, offensively, what changes do you make? They want to throw the football and the offense is predicated on the pass. So I think what they're going to do is kind of look at the conditions. When the rain lightens up, elect to go downfield, but when the rain is steady, you have to force feed the football to Jordan Bentley. And he's a good runner in between the tackles. He's not an off-tackle guy. He's a guy that likes to mix it up in between the two tackles with that forward lean. And Glass keeping it himself on the little miscommunication there. But, you know, they get about 149 yards on the ground. They prefer, of course, for Glass to throw it out. But he gets ahead for a couple. He should have pitched that ball there. You know, as a quarterback, when you're running the option, you're thinking, you're thinking, if I can get the ball to a running back who's a better runner than myself, I'm going to pitch it to get it to him. In that case there, Glass called his own number and picked up minimal yardage. I would be surprised if they do a little wrinkle. At some point in this game, they do a little wildcat formation. Maybe put a running back in the backfield. And Jordan Bentley has done wildcat for them before. And you see two running backs, Hilaire and Bentley. Bentley, the fake, and then the reverse, Ibrahim. Ibrahim is brought down just short, about a couple of yards of the sticks. That was Keenan Isaac on the stop. They had it. Yeah. They had it, but I'm going to blame this on the runner, Ibrahim, because you're going to see the seal block. Once he gets to the outside, on the left, right side of your screen, you're going to see a seal block there. So that's the fake, the razzle-dazzle. He elects to cut inside instead of going outside. Yeah. They add outside leverage. You see number 12, Terrell Gardner, saying, why didn't you come outside? He cut up because if had he gone to the outside, there was nobody out there to make a play. Timeout. Alabama State. That's that's Alabama State with the timeout. Let's take another look at it, Jay. Okay, so you'll see him sell it. And take a look outside. The, Number 12 is setting up Gardner, setting up outside. He goes inside, advance to the defender. Had he gone outside, that would have been a big play for the Bulldog offense. Ibrahim, the true freshman out of Miramar. And so Alabama State looking to set things up on defense now with another big fourth down. I mean, outside of that one big play they've given up, the Alabama State defense has been the story. They've kind of taken it to Alabama A&M. The Bulldogs from Alabama A&M have had great field position in this football game in the first quarter so far. And haven't been able to capitalize on it. Making the change at the line. It's glass, glass. Sees some pressure again, letting it go in the area of Ibrahim. But the pass incomplete, a turnover on downs, and again, another big stand for the Hornets' defense. Yeah, and 
And they brought another corner blitz from the weak side of Akil Glass. And there's supposed to be some type of site adjustment. They're just having some communication issues between the wide receiver and the quarterback. That's twice we've seen Glass throw the ball where a Bulldog wide receiver hasn't really even been close to the area. Ten seconds to go in this first quarter. Davis with the handoff to Gray. Gray shifting, nice moves up ahead, and he's close to the first down. Picked up about nine on that run, and that will bring us to the close of the opening period here from the Magic City Classic. Alabama A&M with a big play strike. That's how they got on the board. They lead 7-0. We talk about just how big this tailgate is. You say, folks, come here with their RVs ready to go since Tuesday. Look at that. I can smell it from up here. Rotisserie. Whoa. Oh, I like oh, the whoa, ribs. Wait, wait a minute. Yeah, you're, wait a you're minute. a Florida girl. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, don't, like I don't mess with Gator. <laughs> you don't uh -uh, like Gator? I don't, I don't mess with no Gator. I give him style points, though. I'm not going to try it, but I give him some style points and presentation. The presentation was nice as Alabama and him carries the ball on second and one to start this second quarter. Well, they had some success on the ground, but not enough of what they would like to see. Only 35 in that first quarter. They're used to getting close to 100 per game. Here's Ezra Gray once again. Gray trying to shake some tacklers, and he's across midfield. I mean, I'm telling you, between Gray and Bell, these are two of the best runners you're going to see in the conference. Gray's got that shape. They're both from the state of Florida. You know something about those ball clearings from Florida. But look at him getting the open space, accelerate, forward lean. Nice running by Ezra Gray. <laughs> Gray out of Lynn Haven, Florida. Where's that to? Near the Panhandle. It's up in the Panhandle. Nope. Davis going for it. Has a man. Michael Jefferson. Yes. Well, answering back with a big play. The 52-yard pass and catch to their big dog, Michael Jefferson. Nice target, 6'3", 194-pound sophomore, just attacks the seam. And you'll see the miscommunication between Holloway, number 20, Armani Holloway, and the safety. And he's able to go in untouched for the score. On the tip, the extra point, and look like some movement before the snap. We'll get the call. And if it's against Alabama A&M, you go for two. This is the classic. This is a rivalry. Any chance you get to take a lead, you go for it. I'm not retrying nothing. <laughs> I'm trying to win the classic. If you get an opportunity in games like this to take the lead, take the lead. You've been playing from behind the whole first quarter. You got an opportunity to take, even if it's a one point lead, it's still the lead. I go for it. You just need a yard and a half. Don't let me downhill. Come on, Hill. Instead, he elects to play it safe and try to tie this ball game at seven apiece. Look, Alabama AM owns this series. They won it last year, but it's been seesaw battle back and forth. They've traded off wins. I'll tell you this. This is the longest. Hill Ely will have some extra time to maybe think about it, perhaps change his mind. Change his mind as. Well, that's. I think they, he's going to decline. He's going to decline. Alabama State has, a, has elected to decline the offside foul. So we'll retry it from the three yard line. Mm. I'm still just surprised they're not going for it. You need a yard and a half to take the lead. I would have gone for it, but that's why I'm up here. And I've got zero career victories under my belt. 
But you'd say you're undefeated in this booth, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Big play to Michael Jefferson. It's all even at seven. Feist, to help turn your ambitions into action. What would you like the power to do? It's the Magic City Classic, folks, and this drive summary for Alabama State says we are ready to answer. Four plays, 68 yards, and just over a minute. Michael Jefferson is their guy, the sophomore out of Mobile, Alabama. He's the one who got into the end zone. Hornets kick it off, back to receive it. Number 23, Gary Quarles. Quarles collects it past the 20-yard line and the 30, and he's just knocked short of it. Good hit there from the Hornets. They're ready. Nigel Schamberger. Let's take a look at that touchdown. Michael Jefferson was able to get open. The play action, watch this play action here, right? This is just some jump. They want you to look at that. He falls for it. Denzel Davis peeking in the backfield with the distraction from the play action, pulls him up close to the line of scrimmage. Doesn't recognize a streaking Jefferson going behind him for the score. And that's why you, you do little things like play action. Kind of boring, you wonder why don't teams just drop back? Because you want to get the defense to take a step forward so you can get something behind them. The handoff to Jordan Bentley. Bentley going ahead for a few yards. Stopped by big Christian Clark. Christian Clark, if you continue to call his name a lot, that means that this Alabama State defense is doing it. He's that run stuffer. They want him to control the line of scrimmage. Well, they, they told us this week, and, and Travis Pearson said, look, we have to find a way to stop the run. They're well aware of Jordan Bentley. They've seen him now in the last three years. This is their fourth time seeing him. They know what he could do. Keel just dumps it down and glass with the incompletion. I'm telling you, Christian Clark is continuing to have an impact on this game. That play was designed screen class. Clark just held two white jerseys in his hands and his paws and held on to them, and that really disrupted the timing of that screen. This is designed to go to the running back. But look in the middle. You see big, the big fellow there? He's got one guy on him, and there's no lane for you to get that pass off accurately. Glass with pressure on his back gets the throw away, and it's incomplete. The intended target was Ibrahim. Well, good coverage there by Keenan Isaac. The length of those covers, uh, corners coming into play. Yeah, long throw from one hash mark to the other, and you see the hit on glass. That's a ball, though, I think Ibrahim should have been able to come up with. Pretty accurately thrown ball, considering he was under duress. Now fourth and seven, and Corey back on the field. Schamberger. Schamberger on the block. And how about it? Alabama State partying right now. I mean, just getting the penetration up the middle. Fantastic individual effort on that block. And, you know, we always say in football, in the locker room, you know, the same things make you laugh, can make you cry. So Alabama A&M was laughing when they blocked the punt. Well, now Alabama State gets to laugh again. Back at him. Oh, I like the chain. I like the chain. Wearing it proudly right now is Eric Feltz. But see, you know what? He doesn't keep it on. Oh, okay, I was going to say, he didn't keep it on. He just did it for the pitcher, and it looked like he took it off for a second. I mean, he's a special teams player, so he's probably got to get ready to go back on the field. So hurry up, take your picture real quick. I'm in a classic, and he's getting ready for kickoff. <laughs> so <laughs> I like the focus. Take your picture. You got your moment. Now get ready for your next assignment because you got to get ready to come back on the field. This rain going on and off like a faucet. Back on to attempt the extra point 
and it's good from Hunter Hansen. Fourteen seven, Alabama State, and just like that, two quick strikes, one on offense, and then special teams for the Hornets. I mean, wow, look at that. They just rotate who wins. Yeah. So if I'm looking at that correctly, who's supposed to win today? Alabama, Alabama State, State, right? Yeah, and then we're filling the blanks. So you've seen them all good games, and I'll tell you, I've called each of those. And besides the 2013 game. The other team that you thought was going to win, but that was supposed to win, ended up losing. So I remember 2017 Alabama State, that was Coach Hill's first year on the job. And then Coach, he got the victory, and then Connell Maynard got the victory. So Hill's seen both sides of it. Maynard's only tasted victory thus far in this game. And you look at the sideline for the Hornets, you know they came ready to play in this big rivalry game. This one will go out of bounds. I'll tell you the Alabama State band trying to hype up their team as well. Akil Glass, though, we saw him coming into the game. Number 53 of the kicking team. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line. We saw him come into the game. There was a lot of conversation just about what he could do because he's been performing well all season. Started three of five for 90 yards and since then 0 oh, for six. Yeah, the win, the elements started to take place, which we kind of assumed would happen. But it also will give credit to Alabama State defensively. They found a little blitz package that has forced him to throw the ball a little bit sooner than he would like. Bentley on the carry. I figured it out, though, Tiff. You know what's oh, happening. What's that? And this is purely non-scientific evidence, right? But going from ball play, I used to get hyped up when the band got there, <laughs> right? The band was late. But ever since the band showed up, started playing, they got new energy over there on that sideline, those black and gold helmets, and they've matched the enthusiasm that the Marching Hornet Band has brought into the stadium. According to my scientific, non-scientific data, that's been the key. <laughs> Bentley once more trying to power forward for some yards. He gets to just about the 40-yard line, and it'll be third and five. And this is where Akil Glass, he needs to get hot. You know, he missed his last five or six pass attempts, and now third down as a quarterback, that's where you earn your scholarship. Well, there were nine starters returning to this offensive unit, and you watch them continue to grow. We'll see if they can grow up here on this drive on third and five as there is an injured bulldog down on the field. There's a timeout down there. We'll take one with them. Come back to Birmingham. Go back to ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. Third down and the incomplete pass as in on the coverage was Joshua Hill. That brings up fourth down for the Bulldogs. And the struggles to own the yeah. football for Akil Glass continue. Started out decent. It's gone ice cold in this football game. The crossing route, this is what you need to have. But that ball thrown a little bit behind him and good coverage by Hill. They've got to find a way to jumpstart their offense as they have not been able to get anything going in the passing game. The top team in the league with 301 yards per game in the air. Flag on the field and Fourth shot, 31 of the offense. That's a five yard building. Still fourth down. And this will push him back. Five yards. Now ball spotted at the 35-yard line of Alabama A&M. Corey on the punt gets it away. And the fair catch by Crab. Well, we talked about just how back and forth this series was. This was Donald Hill Ely at the helm as the interim head coach back here in 
came up on the favorable side of things. Late plays, onside kicks. And what happens here? State holds on for the victory, and that, that's the defining moment if you're going to be a head coach at either one of these institutions. Having the opportunity to raise the trophy here at Legion Field means you won the Classic. Ezra Gray on the first down carry. You know what I like about the game, the, the atmosphere and everything all around the city. They tell you, oh, happy classic. <laughs> so it'll be Monday, happy classic. It'll be Thursday, happy classic. It's the classic week here in Birmingham. And to be honest, there's no other place or tradition quite like it in the HBCU football landscape. And I know the Bayou's out there. Don't start with the grandma. <laughs> this is different. The screen pass to Ezra Gray. Gray out in space going to the sideline and pushed out by Holloway. And that's the play selection you need. Don't, don't go with the downfield passing in this type of game until you're com comfortable with your quarterback throwing the ball in the rain. You can throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage. A little nice setup screen pass. Get the big blockers out in front. Carl Thompson and Jordan Williams, number 60 and 65, and Gray does the rest. 15-yard gain puts him at midfield. Gray on the carry. Gray to the left Ooh. side. Gray has got some room. Look at Ezra Gray go down the sideline, and there is Holloway to push him out. I tell you, Ezra Gray is having some success on the ground. A thousand yards now on the season. For the running back. Yeah, and watch the move he puts on number 29 right there. You talk about cutting on the dime. Trenton McGee, you left your jock strap on the field, son. You missed that tackle, but Gray's a guy that can make you miss. Explosive, shifty, and nice vision. This time they change it up, go to Bell. Bell barely gets back to the line of scrimmage, but Ezra Gray is that guy that you've seen for Alabama State over the years who's just kind of been that proven steady back for them. Again, we've seen the addition of the South Florida transfer, Duran Bell, try to help him out a little bit, spell him in him as he's on the sideline. Bell moving to the outside. Bell with a good pop there from the Bulldogs. This is this is good vision. This is a well-designed run play, but even better execution by Duran Bell. This is a, he's got to have the patience to do two things. One, he's got to get all the way across the formation, but he's got to be patient enough to let the line set the edge. Once they set the edge, turn on the Jets, cut up field. And that's when you talk about you know, so often you hear terms like running off tackle. That play was designed to run off tackle. And good job of setting it up. Not anything real exciting with nine or ten yards, but that was a nice job of running the football. And the injured Bulldog is Selmar Russell. And you know this game means a whole lot to him. A Montgomery native went to Huntsville to play with Alabama A&M. He's being helped off the field. Yeah, he wants to prove a point there. How you grow up in Montgomery and go to Alabama a &M. You're not allowed to do that. I thought that was illegal. Well, it, it might be, but, you know, he was brave enough to do so. But we've seen so much of that where, you know, a family member has played at the rival school, a house divided, a husband goes to Alabama State, a wife goes to Alabama a and That's what this rivalry brings. Third and five from the 10-yard line. Davis steps in and he finds his man Jefferson for the score. There go that man again, Tiff. Every so often, somebody's going to emerge as a star in the classic. They raise their productivity in the big game, and Michael Jefferson seems to be that guy for Alabama State. Stick post. This is what you want. Big six foot three inch target. Square your shoulders up, make yourself big, and snatch the ball out of the air for the score. Michael Jefferson now with two touchdowns today. His seventh of the season. With the extra point, Alabama State has scored 21 unanswered points to take a two touchdown lead over their in-state rival. Opportunity to stick skinny post at the goal line, make yourself big for the score. Hornets are in control.
What would you like the power to do? Let's take a look at that last scoring drive capped off by this play by Alabama State. And you're going to take a look at the strong safety here. And unfortunately, it's the second time I've had to circle Denzel Davis, the strong safety. Take a look at his angle pursuit. Gets too wide. Allows Jefferson to cross his face down by the goal line. That's a score. And that's something that can't happen. You have to play that inside out. But oh, yeah, Michael Jefferson, you can flex because you're having a good classic. There's been a strong response since Alabama A&M came out on their second drive of the ball game. Had a big strike to number eight, Zabrian Moore, for 76 yards, and it was capped off by a Jordan Bentley one-yard touchdown. Here's Quarles, Quarles across the 20 yard line, moving towards the sideline. And the flag coming out at the end of that play. There's maybe some extra dragging going on with that. How to control your emotions there. You had him out of bounds for a good job on kick coverage. What's the foul? Lady out of bounds, number 59 of the kicking team. That's 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. You see, good job of surrounding the football. He's going out of bounds, and then uh, momentum took him there. Wasn't as blatant as I thought it was. That's a tough one. So Quarles gets the carry and gets pushed back by that big rush up ahead or surge up ahead from Alabama State's defense. Well, you'd like to believe that. The Hornets defense has played thus far, Jay. They've responded, and they've really provided a pick-me-up for their team. Yeah, outside of the one mental mistake they had when they gave up the big play, they've done a good job of controlling the line of scrimmage and frustrating Akil Glass, the quarterback for Alabama A&M. Glass trying to set it up, oh, and oh, man. Missed opportunity. Glass just has not been able to get in sync again after that big pass. Yeah, how does Nicholas Terry, number 16, right side of your screen, miss this? He's got a beat on it. He's so worried about the hit that he didn't pick up the football was in his range for the interception. And Gil Glass continues to struggle here in the rain. And it's coming down heavy. They hand it off and ball is on the ground once again. Quarles. Gets on top of it, but it was jarred loose by the defender. And Colton Adams, who we've called his name already in this ball game, they like this true freshman, says he's going to be something special. Yeah, they call him Bubba. And watch Bubba come into the hole. And I like that. When you got an inside linebacker, run stopper, no sleeves, no pads, no flash. He just wants to hit. Good job of dislodging the football in Alabama and Alabama A&M. Fortunate to recover. Corey on the punt and the fair catch signal and tough to hold on to and it's Alabama A&M who comes up with it but a penalty marker is out as well. I, I, I wonder I hope they're not gonna call that they didn't give him room to make the catch. <laughs> I hope that's not the call. It came from across the field. He was drifting the whole time and didn't catch it cleanly. I'd like to see that. But it depends on what the call is. I hope they're talking about it. Well, he had a fair catch signal. He's going, that's a fair catch. That's right. not in the play. He's running. All right, and then she, he tries to field it right here. Kick Goes through the hands, yeah. 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 With targeting, kicking team number number ten. That foul being forced, fifteen yards from the end of the kick. The previous play is under further review. So they're calling targeting. So they're not saying that he that he uh, didn't allow him to make the catch. They're saying he might have led with the crown of his helmet, and that brings an automatic review from the booth up top. 
They're looking at Amari Holloway, number 10 for the Bulldogs here. Oh, I, he lowered the helmet. Yeah. And the other guy came in and <laughs> hit him with a helmet. But let's see. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's tough because even though it looked like he came in at his shoulder will here from Jesse Harris. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. However, the kick catch interference will be enforced from the end of the kick, 15 yards. Alabama State will retain possession, first and 10. Wow. Okay. So they said he did <laughs> interfere. And I... I I don't Jay, agree with you're, that not, you're not feeling that one. Nah, I'm not, not at either. all. I'm off. I would have gone with the targeting. I would have ejected him for targeting and not gone with the kick interference. I don't think that was uh, I don't think that was kicking interference there. He just dropped the ball. He got himself in a bad position and missed it. Connell Maynard is like, I, I, I need some more explanation here. Here it was, our special teams was set to make a great play and we were gonna start with some wonderful field position. Instead, his defense has to trot back onto the field. And I think unfortunately for, for Coach Maynard, the catch, catch interference is not a reviewable, reviewable play. So That's can a tough argue, break for the Bulldogs. Yeah, you can. Alabama A&M spins a timeout, but if you're just joining us, this is how we got here. It was A&M who got on the board first, and then State, Alabama State comes back and answers. second quarter for the Hornets. And I think we've talked all game long thus far, Jay, just about the weather. It just hasn't been able to make up its mind. Several systems that are moving across. It was expected that it would rain pretty much most of this ball game going into the evening, but the wind has died down at least here at Legion Field. And Gray on the carry, and he is quickly wrapped up, wrapped up by Marquise Price. The grad transfer, excuse me, the graduate student out of Fort Valley, Georgia. Maybe sometimes when you have a call or a play go against you, that kind of upsets you and fires you up a little bit. Maybe that's what this Alabama A&M defense needs. I mean, who's going to be the spark plug for them on defense? Try to get the ball back and give their offense a chance. The Alabama State. Fine to take their time here. Keep the ball on the ground with the rain. Here's Gray. Gray again, we mentioned already, surpassed the 1,000 yard mark on the ground this season. Excuse me, for his career. That's, those are the type of plays you need there. If you can pick up five, six yards on the ground, keep the clock running, you're playing with the lead. I like what you said earlier, Ezra Gray just has been a consistent back for Alabama State during his four-year career there in Montgomery. Injured Bulldog player down will step aside quickly here from Legion Field. Isn't such a secret after all. Try America's number one mattress for 100 nights risk-free. Breon Austin on the sideline for Alabama A&M as third and three as we're back for State. Ezra Gray, Ezra Gray is just continuing to get good yardage, good runs, solid, solid guy for this Hornets offense. Nice cut. Good running back can make guys miss in small places. He's had the vision to see the hole, change direction, and pick up a big first down for the Hornets. He just seems like he's just moving a step faster than everybody. A little bit more energetic, a little bit more pep in the step than anybody else on the football field right now. 
80 yards on 11 carries for Ezra Gray. They hand it off to their senior running back once more. And he's brought down near the 45 yard line. But Gray, not only an outstanding athlete, he's a great student athlete. 4.0 GPA graduating That's what I'm about. Say that in May. 4.0 GPA graduating in May with a degree in compu computer information systems. Team's scholar athlete last year, probably in line to pick it up again this year. Davis feeling some pressure, and Austin, who was hurt a lot too long ago, brought him down. Throwing up the hooks after it, too. What's that mean? Omega Sci-Fi, the Q dogs. And you have to question, does Davis have an opportunity to get rid of this football? They bring the corner blitz from the weak side, and instead of throwing the ball away there, he lets to hold on to the football, fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage. But you'd like to see him just say, okay, you got me with the corner blitz, I miss, get rid of the football. Don't take that unnecessary hit. Five and a half to go here in the second quarter. Alabama State has been rolling. Davis has a man. It's Tyreek Allen and Allen with the reception. That was a tough catch for Allen. Had a couple of white jerseys around him. Yeah, nice recognition by Darius Davis. One on one, they're bringing the blitz. Get rid of the ball early and allow your wide receiver to run underneath it and come up with the big play. Tyreek Allen lays out for it. And Alabama State once again in scoring position. And spun down behind the line of scrimmage. There was Marcus Cushion. And starting to see a little sense of urgency and frustration on Alabama AM defensively. The coordinator Granville Eastman been blitzing his linebackers a little bit more than we're accustomed to seeing. And I think that's because Gray has had success running the football against his defensive squad. When you think for this Alabama AM defense, they're having to get used to a new system with the new DC. And right now he's being tested. It's second and 12, Alabama State, and Duran Bell picks up a few yards. But I think on both sides, I mean, everybody has to deal with changes and adjustments for Alabama State. They've got a new offensive coordinator. So this is the third year and uh, third time that these players have seen a new system in three years. And they're adjusting. And the good thing for both teams is these coordinators know each other. And Blackwell, as you mentioned, was at South Carolina State with Buddy Pugh for some years. And Norfolk State and Eastman was at North Carolina Central, their defensive coordinator for a number of years also the interim co head coach for a year so they know each other and right now Blackwell's just getting the best of Eastman Got there's again. a man and he drops it right in and out of the hands of Tyreek Allen that was a touchdown yeah another blown coverage Tyreek Allen was wide open you have to come down with that football the senior from San Antonio Texas on the slant route ball thrown just a little bit high but Definitely catchable ball. They're blitzing. He replaces where the blitzer comes from. And he just muffs it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and remember that play. Okay. I'm, telling you, I'm telling you, this is a classic. Alabama A&M is going to come back in this football game. They don't go anywhere. And it's plays like that. When you don't put the team away early, come back and haunt you. 36-yard attempt is blocked. And special teams once again. Coming up with big plays on both sides. This time it's in favor of the Bulldogs. I mean, the block field goal just culminates what happened. And it's classic. It's weird things happen in this football game. And he just missed. <laughs> I was going to the right low trajectory and put that on the kicker. And, and just by, you're only up by 14. You're giving A&M still has hope. Going into the locker room down 21 kind of shaking your head but now a and can put together a nice drive and make this a one score game in which they've been thoroughly outplayed let's see what happens keel glass has 80 yards to drive his offense down the field and again just has been off page 
changing off center with his wide receivers, but a marker coming out late. That hold going against Alabama State. We're talking about Akil Bass struggling a little bit. I want you to take a look at number 87. Right here, your tight end running up the seam. That's wide open. Get him the football. Get him the football. Get him the football. The pass interference will take that. But you had an opportunity for a big play. Jordan Bentley being patient, staying behind his blockers, and Bentley with the first down and a little yak after. And now you're starting to see Bentley, the senior leader, a little pep in his step, trying to fire up this offensive unit of the Bulldogs. Pick up a 14. They go with Bentley again. Bentley not trying to be denied. He's dragged down by Devin Booker. And they should get up and line up in the same formation again. The bunch formation at the top of the screen is distracting Alabama State. They're taking, see all the confusion at the top of the screen? They're taking, <laughs> they're smartly taking the timeout because they were timeout. in all types of Alabama disarray. State. Alabama State spends their final timeout of the first half. And so for the top rushing offense, excuse me, passing offense in the league. It's been the ground game that's helped them out today. Yeah, schematically, they found some ways to confuse Alabama State. Consecutive plays, same play design. Jordan Bentley's found the crease. You look at the drive chart this quarter for the Bulldogs, three consecutive punts. And interestingly enough, Jay, that was the first down, first first down of the second quarter after that 14-yard run from Jordan Bentley. Yes, it's been a while. Maybe they can get it back and going, get some momentum going into the locker room. Glass staying back to pass as Gary Quarles. Quarles lays out for the catch. Good job by Quarles, the running back out of the backfield on the wheel route. Nice location, comes up with a big grab for his quarterback. Hurry up, no huddle, and then some motion by the wide receiver after that 31-yard catch. That's a five-yard penalty, steal first down. You see Glass put some air under the watch the readjustment by Quarles. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> he didn't catch that. They get the ball off, and I'll tell you, we've seen some determined running from Jordan Bentley, but right there, Urshad Davis determined, determined to get to him as the tackler. The true freshman out of Opelika, Florida. A walk on for this group, and he's a guy who can move around in that secondary, can play both safety and corner. Glass misfires there. The intended target was Ibrahim Natron. Cole Pepper was right by him. And, and if I'm Alabama State, I'm going to continue to blitz. Glass because every time they've gone to the blitz, he seemed a little bit rattled. Now, risk is high risk, high reward. And as a quarterback, you have to say, if they're going to blitz me, my completion percentage may not be that high, but I have to hurt you with big plays down the field. Now we see Connor Maynard coming out with a little empty backfield, trying to spread out this defense of Alabama State. Third and long, only converted one today. The Bulldogs. Trying to get some points on the board before the end of the half. Glass seeing some pressure. Nowhere to go. And the Hornets are right there in his face. Trevor Goodrum was the dude. Continue to bring the pressure. He, he's just looking at the looks and there's some confusion over there. Goodrum, the linebacker, able to get the huge safety and force Alabama A&M to a punt. 
Well, he's coming off the edge and just a good stun on the inside. Yeah. Glass elects to hold on to the ball rather than try to get rid of the football. Loss of 15, so that backs them up near midfield. And Kobe Crab standing on his own 10 yard line. Watches this one drift off into the end zone for the touchback. 41 seconds to go in the first half. And right now, Alabama State is feeling good. Their band showed up late, but on time, just in time to give them the spark they needed to score 21 unanswered points against their in-state rival, Alabama A&M. And you know what? We're not gonna have any band rankings. We've gotta have Jay's HBCU power rankings. It would only be right. And you, you're, you're curious to who's gonna be number I one am. and number I two. Am. Everybody else is. Hey, look, there's a, there's a great game going down between Southern and Alcorn State. Huge implications. Lots. For these two teams on the field, they can ill afford to walk away with a loss. But right now, Alabama State has snatched Big Mo, and they go into the locker room with it up 21-7. Jay, it's a rivalry game. We've talked about it all half long. What adjustments can they make here? Hopefully the weather will change for Alabama a and It looks like we're starting to see some sunny skies, and that'll let their passing game, which they're so reliant upon, become a factor in the second half. The bands marching on to the field. Lots of energy inside Legion Field. Connell Maynard trying to pump his team up. They're trailing 21 to 7. Welcome back to the Magic City Classic. We're at the half where Alabama stayed on top 21-7 over Alabama A&M. Time now for Jay's HBCU power rankings and some shakeups already after last. Hey, we been a very exciting season thus far and some quality wins and some quality losses. But right now, I'm going with Southern University at number five. Well, we'll see how that goes. They've got a big matchup today versus all corn State, so that's going to shake up the top five, period. But Southern's got Dawson Odom. That football team's playing pretty well with a good running quarterback as well. Number four, let's go to the MIAC. Let's go to Florida. This has got to be the quietest team that's 6-1 in HBCU football because they've got the win, but they haven't been impressive victories. They haven't won in dominating fashion, but Coach Terry Sims, he's got a good squad down there in Daytona. Three. What? North Carolina AT, they've been number one for like ever, it seems like. But after the loss at Florida AM, North Carolina AT falls off the top spot and they go down to number three. Gutsy effort in a raucous environment, but they couldn't get the job done in Tallahassee. So North Carolina AT comes in at number three. Running back Jermaine Martin is the man, though. No. Whoa, number two. Rattlers, what do they do, Tim? Strike. strike. They strike. strike. And, and they strike, strike again. again, and Ryan Stanley and the boys able to come away with a huge victory over North Carolina A&T. The Rattlers, the Willennium Part 2, is that what they call it? It continues down there in Tallahassee. They're in prime shape, and right now I got them as the number two ranked team in HBCU football. So who's the new number one? Let's go down to the reservation. Alcorn State University. Fred McNair's football team is playing well. How good is Alcorn? They lose preseason SWAC Offensive Player of the Year candidate Noah Johnson. Lose him for three games, and Felix Harper, the freshman, steps up. And he's been absolutely leading this team to unbelievable heights, led by Muhammad Solomon on defense. One of the most complete teams you're going to see. They're good on special teams. They've got good offense. They've got a physical defense. Give it up to the Braves. And sitting on the bubble, Arkansas Pine Bluff, the Golden Lions. Yeah, that's been that surprise team there. And, you know, they shouldn't be surprised because that's a Golden Lion team that put 52 points up against Alabama A&M. So they can score. It's just will the defense be able to contend with the big boys? 
But those are my power rankings. Want to talk about it? Hit me up at Black College Live on Twitter. We'll have more to come here from the Magic City Classic. Stay with us. Jay's getting five is when you come back. Fans prepare with ponchos just in case the rain comes back. It's been on and off in this in-state rivalry here from the Magic City Classic. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green, and this brings up the portion of the program you love to call Give Me Five. Yeah. This is a Give Me Five show with Jay Walker and Tiffany. Yeah. You gonna have to give me five fingers on it. All right, how about right this? Now. Give you five things you have to know Wait if you're gonna do what they call the classic. How the classic? Well, you gotta enjoy the bands. That's taking place right now. Two bands at halftime are gonna get it in. Whoever wins the battle of the bands, I've seen it spark the team to a victory down here in the classic. It does start with those bands. Coming in at number four, how you classic? Well, I'll go with the star power. If you want to have a nice classic that's memorable, you got to bring out the celebrities. And they've got A-list celebrities from Magic Johnson to Anthony Anderson to Don Cheadle. That's Trent Richardson right there. Oh, Jay Walk got to kick it with my boy Q. <laughs> West <laughs> Coast. Your classic, West Side. Number three. You know that. You know I'm a grub. Oh, yeah. It's all about the food. Oh, yeah. You got to line food. that thing up. This is the best tailgate in the country. When do they start tailgating, Tiff? Tuesday. On Tuesday, there's a line waiting outside the stadium on Monday for the tailgate, and you're going to see everything. And this year, they had a little extra flavor, and along with the ribs, I saw a little gator Ooh. on there, barbecue gator. But that's the best tailgate you're going to find out there in all of the country. Number two, how about two chains? <laughs> The post-game concert is going to feature two chains. So you get into the football game, then after the game, you get to check out two chains perform live with a post-game concert. And number one, I'm always going to say this, Tiff, this is first and foremost, about the game. Take it on the field. The football players are giving it on the line. You want to cheer on your school to victory. That is how you tailgate and enjoy the classic. And we're going to see who's going to win this game. Alabama State's in control right now. But like I said before, this is a rivalry game. You never know who's going to come out on top. All right, so who's on the bubble, Jay? I know you like to try to squeak somebody in there. Who is it? What is it? It would be the post-game tailgate. Oh, they're waiting for me down there. I, my boy's over there at the classic affair party and the different sponsors they have out there with chandeliers in the parking lot along with some DJs and some music and some good food. Hey, we won't leave the stadium until probably 10, 11 o'clock at night. That's all right with me. That's all right with me. Magic City Classic. It's all the way live from Birmingham, Alabama. We'll be back with more, but we'll leave you with the sounds of Alabama A&M's Maroon and White Band. Xfinity X1. Simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity, the future of awesome. Great tribute on the field to Cupcake, the three-year-old Camille McKinney, who was kidnapped and her body was found this past weekend in the maroon and white marching band paying tribute to the young girl and purple balloons flying out here across Legion Field. 
Jay Walker, Tiffany Green back with you. Halftime still from the Magic City Classic, a 21-7 advantage for Alabama State. And as we look back at that first half, Jay, we saw uh, two different teams in those two quarters. Let me have you break it down. Alabama A&M, we came out thinking they were going to throw the football effectively, and that's what Connell Maynard likes to do with his football team. And Akil Glass, their quarterback, got off to a good start there, threading the needle, finding open receiver. That explosive play there in the first quarter led to their first score. When after the big play, they get to George Bentley, their steady running back there, able to punch it in. It seemed like they had this thing going the right direction, but then all of a sudden, after a couple plays and mishap where Alabama State was able to hang around in it, they figured out a way to get involved in this football game. Tried a little trickeration there, and that didn't work, so they were trying to dial up some stuff. But then the second quarter, the band showed up, and so did Alabama State. Darius Davis able to find his wide receiver, Michael Jefferson, for the big score. Then the special teams picked it up in the gear with a nice little block in the Payoff for the score by Eric Feltz to get them going, and they really took control with this one here. Another nice throw and catch. Davis to Richardson. That was with 21 points that Alabama State scored in the first half, all in the second quarter. 229 total yards for the Hornets, 104 on the ground, again, powered by Ezra Gray, who's now over 1,000 yards rushing in his career. Third down conversions, an area where Alabama A&M is going to have to find a way to adjust and convert some more in the second half if they want to come back in this ball game. Jay, can you believe it, though? The sun is out. We saw a lot of rain come on and off and through Legion Field and now the sun is peering through as the mighty marching Hornets, Hornets from Alabama State are ready to take the field here. They are ready to get going. Oh, you see those drum majors. They say we come ready, we come ready. We came late, but we came ready. No wonder Casper is America's number one rated mattress.
Magic City Classic. This is what the fans have been waiting for. The Honeybees about to take the field. They are already looking to sting as Alabama State on top 21-7. Watch out. The Hornets are coming your way. January when I got hired. Fix that up. It's, on. it's the greatest classic uh, on earth. Mr. Maynard, how you doing there, sir? But it's been 362, and I can't wait to get to 365. <laughs> it's been a whole year, brother. And all of y'all, I consider all of y'all my friends. So I'm going to thank all my friends and Coach Ely. <laughs> A picture of you all through my house. <laughs> uh, Coach Maynard and I, we will battle like I don't know what when we line down on the field. We expect the great game has always been a great year. Uh, we was fortunate enough to make a couple more plays down the stretch and pull the game out. The 78th running of the Magic City Classic. Always so much fun. A week long of trash talking between the coaches, but this is a year-round thing in the state of Alabama, Jay. I mean, it's, it's the classic weekend. Yeah. They, they call it, you know, it's the classic. It's the band. It's the pageantry. tricks. Everything that's good about HBCU football, college football in general. Yeah, we teased the honeybees for the mighty marching hornets. And honeybees, they get after it, okay? They're the, what were they, the stingettes? The stingettes, and then you and got then the, honey the honeybees. Bees. You like the honeybees. The honeybees, they tear down the house, and then this young lady in the pink sheet went viral, high school young lady, and look, she is a whole mood, Jay. She is coming out there with all kinds of juice. You hear me? And, and the crowd gets excited when the honeybees <laughs> take the field. It's uh, something they've become a... Uh, Larger than life, I want to say. Larger than the, than the rest of the band. The honeybees, they, they are kind of the show. The way things this one, bringing it out to just near their own 30-yard line. So we saw Ezra Gray, a steady dose of him. He picked up 81 yards in that first half. We talked about the steady eddiness for this ball club over the years. And look, anything that they can do to help Kaderis Davis, they're going to do it. Remember, he's been out after a back bruise. This is his first game since returning after going down against Alcorn State. And so thus far, how would you grade the way Kaderis Davis has moved this offense. I thought he was very efficient in the first half considering the conditions. He made good decisions with the football, got it to his playmakers, but he was really aided by Ezra Gray carrying that heavy load in the first half, doing a good job. Davis has a man open in Shahad Booker. Booker with the incomplete pass. Man, Booker has to make that catch. We've seen a couple drops from these wide receiver core Alabama State, that's a good job by Davis. Outside the pocket, rolling out to his left and throws an accurately thrown ball. It's a young man who came into camp. He was the guy for Alabama State. But trying to create a little bit of quarterback competition and just try to push him and make, make him take another step. Look like some confusion in the backfield, just maybe some miscommunication with the running back, Ezra Gray, and Breon Austin is there. Second time we've seen Davis and Gray not on the same page. Opened up the wrong way. Somebody made a mistake there in the running game, and it's going to make it third and very long for the Hornet offense now. Loss of six, and if you're the Bulldogs, you want to come out with a little chip on your shoulder because you need to come up with a stop and give your team a little bit of momentum. Right now, it's all in favor of the Hornets going into the locker room. You have to go to draw play here. I would not be aggressive in this situation trying to get the first down that long. You're backed up in field position. Conservative play calls should come. Behind his intended target, Booker. So that brings up fourth down. And this should be good field position for Alabama A&M to start this second half. Should be. They'll take advantage of it if they can. Brian Jenkins 
Junior will go back there on punt return. But what a horrible way to come out of the locker room for Alabama State. First down, the drop pass. Second down, miscommunication in the backfield. On third down, couldn't even execute the wide receiver screen. That should be of some concern to Coach Don Hill Ely. Jenkins, he's a burner out of Daytona Beach, Florida. We haven't called his name yet today, but he's got some good speed. This one, a line drive. He picks it up near the 30 and goes backwards. Good special teams from Alabama State. The rugby style kick with the roll. And Brian Jenkins picked it up, ill advised. And what could have been great field position for Alabama and will be average field position, but that's who got, has to get it going. He has to get it going. Weather's no excuse now. Go with your game plan, what you want. It's lightened up. The cute glass needs to come out throwing here in the second half. He started game three for five and then went cold. The handoff to Jordan Bentley, and Bentley is met in the backfield, not going down too easily, but Christian Clark was one of the guys in on the tackle. Colton Adams as well, a loss of one. Been a good job of Christian Clark of stuffing the middle. Just can't run there. When he's in the game and he's fresh, he doesn't get blown off the line of scrimmage at almost 400 pounds, tough to move. You have to run away from him. They hand it off to Bentley again, going to the left side, and Bentley having some room. Jordan Bentley across midfield, and he's tough to bring down, and he's brought down just near the 35-yard line of Alabama A&M. They're stuck in the middle. Give the ball to Jordan Bentley. Off tackle, they slide the zone. He finds a crease, one cut towards the middle of the field, and Jordan Bentley makes Urshad Davis, the freshman safety miss in the open field for the big play. Pickup of 39 now, Gary Quarles in, won't be brought down by Christian Clark, but not much room to run after that. And this Christian Clark kid, to be almost 400 pounds, he's got a motor. He stays active. Normally defensive tackles after long run plays, they're sucking for win, but look at Clark, stuff the middle, find the ball carrier, not able to bring him down, but... He's done a good job for the Hornet defense to the same. Showing stamina thus far. Here's a kill glass to drop back on second down and intercepted. Pulled out of the air. And Jeffrey Hill, the nickel back for the Hornets defense with his first INT of the season. This is the big time interception. Great job of recognizing the ball was coming his direction. He located the football and snatches this thing out of the air with another big play by the Alabama State defense. Jeff Hill with the pick. In our Week 8 Monday Night Football matchup, the Dolphins are looking for a little Fitz magic when they take on Juju Smith-Schuster and the Steelers who come in to this one off the bye week, 8 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. When you talk about the Steelers, you have to mention the Alabama AM legend. How about John Stallworth, who played at wideout, but he was also a part of the Pittsburgh Steelers, a four-time Super Bowl champ. Also a part of the Pro Football Hall of Fame as well. And coming out is Duran Bell. Duran Bell, who gives, again, a nice change of pace. Ezra Gray can hurt you, but Duran Bell has a little, little extra step. Yeah, both those guys are special. Talk about Bell. He may have a little bit more ability to take it the distance than Gray, a little bit more top-end speed. But you talk about having a one-two combination at the running back position. When Bell's healthy to go along with Gray, potent backfield. They hand it off to Bell once again. Bell continuing to be slippery inside across the 40. Well, I'll tell you, he had a great game here at Legion Field, the opening week of the season against the University of Alabama, and now he's coming alive here. Now watch him explode. Watch the shiftiness. The little jukes in small spaces setting up the would-be tacklers, picking up first down yardage. 15-yard carry and then toting it for another 11 yards. Again, he played really well against University of Alabama, Birmingham, then had a career high against Tuskegee. They feed the rock to Bell again. 
That's what you have to do if you're at Alabama State. Force feed the run. When you've got good running backs, they're not going to take it to the distance every time. You're going to have some runs like that, but the great runners, the more touches they get, the more explosive and the more dangerous they become. And I'd like to see offensive coordinator Joe Blackwell continue to pound the football with his great runners. Second and nine. Booker in motion. They find Booker in the flat and he's cut down quickly. For this Alabama State offense, how can you continue to keep Davis in a rhythm? They have the ground game going. Do you want to see them pepper in uh, a little more plays and try to take some big chances like they did before with Jefferson? He's a good runner, so I'd like to see him run a little bit more. We haven't really talked about him running so much. He's a dual threat quarterback, so maybe move the pocket a little bit and give him an opportunity to break a big run for him. Davis stepping up, almost tripped up, stays on his feet, loses the football, and bounces on top of it. He was carrying that one like a loaf of bread. <laughs> and that loaf of bread, he tried to squeeze it, it fell out of his lap. And another break he's got there. Keeping the play alive, which no problem with this, but you want more ball security. Cover that football, had it in one hand, and just slipped out. Another lucky break for Alabama State. They maintain possession, brings up fourth down. Brian Jenkins once again back to receive it. And we'll see if he has any greater fortune this time around. Third fumble, though, for Alabama State. Ball security is key. Let's see. They try to bring a little pressure. Punts off. Jenkins receives it. Has room up ahead. Tries to dodge a few defenders. And then he's brought down. 849 remaining in the third quarter. Come back to Birmingham. ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. Thankfully, the weather has started to cooperate here in Birmingham, Alabama. In the first half, we saw a lot of rain and wind, but the tailgate and the party outside of Legion Field continues to go on. Alabama A&M with the ball in just near the 15-yard line. They're trailing by a couple of scores. Brian Jenkins went down on that punt return. The sophomore out of Daytona Beach already been banged up, was suffering a hamstring earlier, a hamstring injury earlier, and now you hate to see this for the youngster. He is one of those guys who has been the life of this offense. You think back to last year, he was important. Yeah, he was a difference maker as a freshman, and the son of Brian Jenkins, former football head football coach at Alabama State, and Bethune Cookman had a chance to see him before the game, hadn't seen him in a while, saw him in that shot, and unfortunately, he's got to watch his son get tended to on the on the table. The Bulldogs hand it off to Jordan Bentley. And Jordan Bentley, you've seen just some determined runs from this young man, the senior out of Gunnersville, Alabama. He's running like he knows what's at stake. It's his final Magic City Classic. Wants to go out on the winning side of this. Understands what this game means for his team. See if he can kickstart the offense to score some points. Glass back to pass late on that one. Almost timed up and picked off by Natron Culpepper. There's certain Excuse me, things, Jeffrey Hill. There's certain things that you don't do as a quarterback, and you don't go back from one side of the field to the other, and you really can't do it late. Very fortunate that ball was not intercepted by Jeffrey Hill. And Glass just hasn't really gotten moving. And, and, and when you're in that situation, now in the third and eight situation, how do you help him gain some confidence? You try to find the easy throws for him. Maybe 
shrink the playbook, throw the ball a little bit less downfield, shorter passes where he can get the most out of his pre-snap read. As you mentioned, this is an offense that's predicated on Akil Glass having success throwing the football. Glass just overthrows his man in Terrell Gardner. And again, you look back at that play, did he have somebody open? Wide open. Mm -hmm. He's not seeing things well. They jump on the drive route. So we'll, we'll freeze at the top. They're going to jump on the drive route coming across here. Watch the tight end settle right behind it. That's how you draw it up. You're going to see the drive route. They jump him. Give it to me. I'm open. The tight end, Kendrick Johnson, wide open. Your read is one, two, three. He stayed with the one, and the secondary read was, I don't know how more wide open you get than that. It's a great play call by the offensive coordinator, Connell Maynard. Killed Glass, just not executed. And they said, you know, he has a tendency to kind of try to maybe force things or overthink things, and here he's just got to settle down. Flag comes out before the punt. So I move him back, and now Spencer Corey in his own end zone. Corey able to get it off. Fielded on the 50. Kobe Crabb trying to find some room, tries to reverse field instead, goes backwards. And in on the stop was Armani Holloway. Well, Ezra Gray thus far has had a solid afternoon, and, and that's what he's done just throughout his career. 12 rushes, 81 yards for the senior. And bringing him back on the field after the last series, they went with Duran Bell, but I like the package they have in there where they put them both in the backfield. It's kind of pick your own poison. They showed some of that in the first half. Thought they had success with that one. Coming out here in the second half, going with two tight end formation, single back. They give it to Gray. And Gray will stop after a pickup of just about a couple. As football teams go with the double tight formation, they do that to make you kind of show your hand to balance out what's going to be the strength of your defense. And they normally do it so they can kind of push you around a little bit. Think they're a little bit stronger than you up front in the trenches. They'll go two tight in and try and force the football on you. Hand it off again to Gray. And Gray. Got down there by Marquise Price. Well, this Alabama State team coming in at three and three on the season. Picked up a win against Jackson State on the road. Impressive victory. That's right. That Jackson State for Jackson State homecoming. homecoming. And took the week off, and Donald Hill Ely is looking to push Alcorn State in the Swackies. Also give him credit for a nice victory versus Grambling. The pass out to Michael Jefferson, and Jefferson catches it, pushed out of bounds by Tawiley Wilson. Jefferson continues to have a good classic on the out route. Nice ball by Darius Davis, and make the catch. And get not one, but two feet inbounds for the first down for Alabama State. Jefferson responsible for two and three touchdowns today for the Hornets of the 48 and 10 yard variety. Sophomore out of Mobile. Trying to add to it as Gray was quickly brought down by Price. And you think, you know, just how is Alabama State, how are they gonna hang in there? With all Corn State, the reigning, defending SWAC champions, I mean, can they give them a good run for their money? I mean, they don't play them this season, so, excuse me, they did play them this season. They fell at the hands of the Braves, and going down and wrestled down was Gray by Armani Holloway. And with that being the case, since Alcorn's already beaten them, 
They can't worry about that. They're going to need some help. They're going to need somebody to knock off all corner, try and force some type of tie situation. But their approach has to be just win every game in front of us. They, they're going to need some help. So I know Alabama A&M, that's their approach. They took the loss to Arkansas Pine Bluff, but they still have Alcorn there. So if you think Alcorn is going to run the table, then that becomes interesting. But you still have hope. They're not mathematically eliminated. That's what they're playing for. Third and a dozen. Flags come out in this one. Likely to push Alabama State back. Ball stop. That's a five yard penalty. Still third down. And Alabama State is fortunate that Akil Glass has not gotten it going. I mean, I would have thought 21 points is not going to be enough, but Glass hasn't found his rhythm yet, and I still don't think 21 points is going to be enough. The Hornets are going to have to figure out a way to increase this lead a little bit because I do believe when you got a quarterback, it doesn't take much for him to get hot and get his team back in a hurry. Look over the last three meetings. I mean, this is these have been close ball games. Davis with time and an interception throws it right to the white jersey. Miscommunication as Quinn Travis Kelly coming up with the second INT of the season. They needed him to step up on defense, according to Granville Eastman, and there he did it. Standing at the right place, the right time, the senior out of Montgomery coming up big for AM. ESPN, home of the college football playoff. Back to action here in Legion Field. A couple of turnovers we've seen today, one from each team, and Alabama A&M gets the ball off of the Kaderis Davis interception. Jordan Bentley didn't have much room to run. He was brought down by Darren Johnson. You can really see the struggle and the frustration from Alabama A&M offensively. The passing game's not there. I'm trying to force the run just because Kill Glass hasn't made the throws needed to put points on the board. Trips to the top of your screen, but they hand it off to Bentley again. Bentley now moving the pile, continuing to turn those legs. And Jordan Bentley on 18 carries today is nearing the century mark on the ground. Hard nose runner. Jordan Bentley's been that way for a long time. You give him a little bit of a hole, he'll find it. Not afraid to throw those shoulders up in there. Responsible for AM's lone touchdown today. Glass just flanks it out. And the completion to Kendrick Johnson. Johnson is brought down by Davis near midfield, and that'll move the chains. Pick up a five. A nice play they drew up. And how often do you see a tight end H back screen out there? And just a little flip of the wrist, get it to him in open field. Able to pick up the first down. Got to set him up for play action. They've been going with this power backfield look. Now it's time to go play action off that same look. Instead, Bentley with the carry. And Jordan Bentley, a guy who we've talked about, a four-year starter in this program. Coaches are just so high on him, the type of high-character individual he is, a great encourager for his group. And they put it in his hands again. A heavy dose of Jordan Bentley. But thus far, Travis Pearson's defense has been able to hold the Bulldogs' offense at bay. Remember, Pearson was on the staff for Alabama A&M a couple years ago. Now the defensive coordinator for the Hornets. Doing a good job. This is an Alabama A&M offense that averages 32 points a game. Yet they're stuck on seven since the first quarter. The completion for Glass and Cameron Young, the first time he's been targeted today. And it's good for a first down. And that was one of the few sure throws we've seen from Akil Glass. Got the most out of his pre-snap read. Got the look he wanted to. And 
stepped into his throw, showed the arm strength and threw an accurate pass. Going with the no huddle, empty backfield once again. And the flag comes out. Uh, illegal snap, number 71 in the offense. That's a five yard penalty. Still first down. That's... Well, the stop playing when the Queens approach the football. <laughs> It has to the band stop playing and they start playing right in the middle of them talking. I, I really think that's one of those HBCU rules. You hear the warnings all the time when the quarterbacks underneath the center are supposed to stop playing. Mm -hmm. And it was his his, his band. <laughs> Trying to go down to Cameron Young and overthrows Young. And a late flag comes out as Urshad Davis was on the coverage. Fifteen yards. Pass interference. Defense number 22. And 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. Call for the P.I. A good little battle down there on the bottom of your screen. Davis thought he was in good coverage, riding the wide receiver along the sideline, but the official saw it different. First down, Alabama AM. Glass on the outside finds Gardner. Gardner with a big hit from Colton Adams, who came in to finish him off. Here goes Bubba. <laughs> Bubba Adams. And that's how you play the linebacker position. You ask your cornerback to funnel the ball carrier back towards the middle of the field, you finish it off. They say he's a throwback linebacker, can flat out play. Glass calling his own number and a kill. Glass moving forward for the first down. 13 yard pickup, and now AM in the red zone. Can they strike before the end of the hat quarter? They called his own number. Good job making a quick decision, getting vertical, picking up the first down. Bentley with the carry, and Bentley continuing to stay on his feet again. First time you hit him, he's not necessarily going down. He's running with a purpose there. Sense of urgency. Looked like they were going to tackle him behind the line of scrimmage. Instead, keeps the legs churning. Picks up three yards. Bentley trying to move through the tackles. Jordan Bentley getting close to that goal line. Just stopped short on the one. And that'll bring us. To the final play of this third quarter. Jordan Bentley moving in for the score. Second touchdown of the day for Jordan Bentley. Told you it was going to be a gun. No team runs away with this football game. And Alabama A&M has been thoroughly outplayed for most of this football game. But they're just a score away from tying this up. Impressive drive. Particularly the effort of Jordan Bentley carrying his team on his shoulders into the end zone. Corey on to attempt the extra point. Bulldogs pull within seven after that 11 play drive for 62 yards, capped off by a Jordan Bentley. One yard touchdown run. This young man, a four year starter in the program, running with sheer wheel, gets into the end zone. Rated mattress. Going into the fourth quarter of the 2019 Magic City Classic from Birmingham, Alabama, AM, within one score of their in state rival. Alabama State. This has been uh, an interesting game, but I have to give credit to not only the bands, but the fans who have yes. stayed committed in the stands. Rain, win, and all. And you know what I normally say? HBC football games and rain don't go together because when that water hits, what, what are the sisters doing, Tim? Oh, we're looking for cover. <laughs> but they've toughed it out. That's what this game means. 
to the folks down here in Birmingham cheering for this squad. There's a regret on the return and a marker comes down just near the 35 yard line of the Hornets. But you go back to that atmosphere and the fans. I mean, they're dedicated. They care about it. They're invested. They want their team to win, whether it's Alabama A&M or Alabama State. And while, yes, they're going to go back and forth, it's all love at the end of it. You saw it even in the coaches' press conference. Yeah, they, they appreciate each other. You know, they understand both schools have been on the either side of this. And I think they got one thing in common. Neither one of the schools really likes Tuskegee. So, <laughs> so they do have that in common. But it comes down to the classic. And I've met players over the years. and. They told me they went to Alabama A&M. I was like, okay, well, what was your record in the Classic? <laughs> That's how they judge their career by their record in the Classic. Alabama State, who, after scoring 21 unanswered points in the third quarter, just really stalled out a couple of punts and then that interception, which led to the touchdown for Alabama A&M. Duran Bell was wrapped up as he tried to move ahead, brought down by Kelly. And when your quarterback throws an interception, it lets you know the next play selection, how much you trust them. They elect to go a little bit conservative, running the football. I'm assuming we're probably going to see a heavy dose of the running game for Alabama State. Instead, they pass a dangerous throw. Jihad Booker tried to go up and get it, but too tall. Trying to find Michael Jefferson again, who had the big first half, but Davis, an accurate throw, and that ball could have been picked off. Got time to get concerned a little bit in the passing game with Kadarius Davis. Last two throws have been ill-advised. Third down. They try to set up something simple and then getting a hand on it with Selmar Russell. This is a great individual play by Selmar Russell. Realizing he's trying to set him up for a screen and was able to locate the quarterback trying to throw the ball and get that big forearm on it for the pass breakup. And a quick three and out for Alabama State. So they have not moved the ball well here in this second half. And now standing in his end zone is Anthony Craven. Craven does not take a friendly bounce for the Hornets. And already Alabama A&M starting in Hornets territory. Look at the last six seasons between these two teams, and it's been back and forth, trading off, and you said it, Jay, the trend would go towards Alabama State, but I think the Bulldogs will have a little something to say about that, only trailing by seven. Yeah, they've got the ball, good field position, so Alabama ain't even trying to go back to back, and I think they really want to try and get a quick strike offense going. Glass. Play action. Has a man. Zabrian Moore. Oh my goodness. Did you see that? The one handed catch for Moore. Quick strike offense. Great job of running the route. He was open for a long time and had the ability to readjust and make one of the best catches you're going to see. This is speed. And you see him recognize him late, but watch Moore climb the ladder with one hand, secure the football. And that might be a Sports Center top 10 nominee, Zabrian Moore, with an outstanding grab. One of the leading receivers in the swipe. Remember, he had that big reception back in the first quarter that led to the Bulldogs' first touchdown of the ball game. That was just tremendous concentration. And he caught that one hand all the way. 40 yards and sets up first and goal from the Hornets' two-yard line. Three 
receivers to the top of your screen. But you've got Jordan Bentley in the backfield. They hand it off, and Bentley is stopped. Bubba Adams was there to meet him. Been a good job of Alabama State adjusting to that bunch formation off tackle running play that Alabama A&M had success with in the first half a little bit. And Jordan Bentley, who's responsible for A&M's two touchdowns, will get a chance to take a quick breather here as there's an injured Hornets player on the field. And Trevor Goodrum is the injured Alabama State player down jack linebacker in this defense so he's getting tended to on the sideline excuse me on the uh, on the field he'll go to the sideline and we'll come back with more correction we're going to stay here Well, I tell you, Jay, with the way that Jordan Bentley has run the ball in this game, you got to think, you got to find number one and put it in his hands. And look at this exotic formation as they move Bentley into the pistol. Rolling out and Akil Glass calling his own number, but a big pop there from Darren Johnson. Johnson, who's played through injury this season, comes up with a big play. That brings up third and goal. And they try with this offset formation, get the quarterback on the edge, and he elects early to decide to run the football and up short takes a good lick from Darren Johnson, the starting inside linebacker. Same look with the formation. This time, Glass decides to take it in again. The Bulldogs score. They came back with that same formation. The Hornets this time couldn't get to it. They had Bentley if he wanted to pitch it, but Glass says, I'm going to do it myself. Option off the end man of the line of scrimmage. Once he freezes that end man on the line. And Alabama A&M ties it up. At 21 apiece, this is what you want from the Magic City Classic. A fantastic finish should be on the way. Is America's number one rated mattress. Oh, it's lively from Birmingham, Alabama. It's a rival tied at 21 all. This one is going to be crazy on the other side. 12:42. To go in this ball game. It's been a game of swings mm -hmm. when Alabama State scored 21 straight points. Now Alabama and in with 14 uncontested to tie this thing up. And I have to think that AM is taking a little bit of the momentum in this game. Ezra Gray can give it back to the Hornets. He is a burner. Ezra Gray with a great return, plowing people over. Ball comes out at the end, but he's across midfield. They're going to call him down right there. Ezra Gray's been balling all game long, and they put him back there on kickoff return and comes up with a huge special teams play. Look at the vision. Finds the vision, finds the lane, cuts through it, finishes off the run. Maybe that's the spark that this offense needs for Alabama State because they've been flat here in the second half. I like the way that Ezra Gray has run the football, lowering his shoulder, not afraid of absorbing contact. And just like you said earlier, you like seeing the two backs yes. with both Gray and Duran Bell. Fast and faster. <laughs> I like this formation. They had success when they did this in the first half. See if they can find it again here in the second. There's Bell, and Bell 
with maybe a pickup of two. Well, Kelly has been all over the field in this second half for the Bulldogs. He came up with the interception. Some big plays from that young man, the senior out of Montgomery. Davis hands it off once more quickly to Bell, and Bell this time having more success running to that right side. And that'll bring up third and short. Guess who was in on the stop again? Kelly, and you talked about Kelly doing a good job chasing down the ball carry. He's right here at his inside linebacker position. Watch him run down the line and track down his ball carry. Slide, slide, it's a foot race. Hold on, don't let go. That's how you play the linebacker position. They wanted him to be a run stopper and, and help up front. And he's answering the call here in this second half. Bell in motion. Davis back to pass. He's looking for his man. And off the helmet, it looked like, of Desmond Fletcher, the intended target for Tariq Allen. Forced it. You have to know down the distance. Third and four. You just need four yards. You don't need the ball down the field. He had Duran Bell going across the formation, wide open in the flat. Elects to go for the high risk throw, and you see Bell right there, number three. He was wide open on the flat. So he bounces off the helmet of Fletcher, and again, the punting unit back on for Alabama State. The fair catch. And they will start inside their own 20 yard line, but the Bulldogs have big mo. <laughs> Alabama AM trying to take the lead for the first time since what the first quarter, if they could get this drive moving, the momentum definitely in their favor. Akil Glass feeling the pressure of Bubba Adams, who's coming his way. The completion across the middle, still on his feet. And knocked out of bounds. That was Abdul Ibrahim. And let's give credit to Akil Glass. He hasn't had his A game today, but the pressure's coming up the middle on the blitz. Watch the escapability of Glass keeps his head downfield, throws an accurate throw while taking a shot from Colton Adams, the linebacker. The handoff to Jordan Bentley, and Bentley ahead for a few yards, but again, solid running today, and a penalty marker comes out as Natron Culpepper was near the Alabama A&M sideline. Yeah, there may be an ejection of Natron Culpepper. I think he might have thrown a punch on the sideline against an Alabama a wide receiver right there in front of the official. After the play, dead ball, unnecessary roughness, defense number five. That's 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. One of those transfers from South Florida, he came over along with Duran Bell, and this is something that you can ill afford. 10.36 to go. Alabama A&M starting to click on offense. You don't want to hand them over another 15 yards. Exactly right. I mean, there was already a big play for Alabama A&M on offense, and then you're going to give them an additional 15 yards, and just like that, the Bulldogs are at midfield. Play action, staying up, and Zabrian Moore. Zabrian Moore, who's been the big guy today. Remember, he had that fantastic catch earlier to help tie this ball game up. 24 yards on the completion. This is quarterback play at its finest. When you're gonna do a naked bootleg, the key, get your head around quick. He's gotta get his head around to take a look, because he doesn't have much time to make that quick decision to throw that ball. Starting to see Akeel Glass heat up a little bit. Jordan Bentley, who's been hot all ball game. Jordan Bentley has been running with purpose this afternoon, brought down by Keenan Isaac, but that was good for 15. And into the red zone, march the Bulldogs. Now we're starting to see the number one offense in the SWAC show up. And Alabama State's on their heels, and they're going to take a timeout to talk about it. And you can see just 
the difference between the two going back to their sideline. Alabama A&M is pumped up. Akil Glass was out in front leading the way. He's hyped up where, as at Alabama State, they're hoping it'll start raining again. <laughs> it stopped raining, and Alabama A&M has picked up the intensity, and the fans are excited standing on their feet. Jordan Bentley, the guy, waits for the pulling guard. Dexter Fuqua to clear out. He finishes off the run. And they've got the ball on the 11-yard line. Well, when Alabama A&M got the win last year against Alabama State, it was those two, Akil Glass and Jordan Bentley, who did most of the damage. This drive so far, four plays, 75 yards. And again, they're eyeing down the end zone just over a minute and a half gone by in this drive. Bouncing off and Bubba Adams coming back to ring him up. Tell you what, he's going to be a good mm -hmm. true freshman from Wetumpka, Alabama. That's in the Montgomery area just for you guys who are wondering. And he missed the four, first four games with a high ankle sprain. And so to have him back, they feel like his future is so bright. Bentley again, and a flag is on the field. Personal foul, chop block, number 75 and number 71. That's a 15 yards from the previous spot. We'll replay third down. The two leaders up front on that offensive line by Tavares Butler and Shanye Rhymes. Yes, yeah, so it's going to start with Rhymes, a left tackle here, and they're going to say 71 comes in and double teams on somebody. Let's take a look and see. Yeah, one goes low, then 75 comes and goes high. Questionable, but you know, by definition of the rule, yes, if one person engaged low, you can't touch them high, even though it wasn't a cheap shot blocked by Rhymes. A little trickeration here, and Gardner, where can he go? <laughs> Nowhere to go as Isaac slams him and wrestles him to the ground. And as a defensive coordinator, you're proud of your defense. There was a lot of trickery going on. They tried to bait him. They didn't fall for it. They stayed in their positions on the field and able to make this trick play backfire. Trying to set up like they're going to run an option to the right, pitch left, and look at all the black jerseys around there. You mentioned the cornerback, Keenan Isaac there, and Colton Adams once again there to finish it up. Isaac, whose parents play, went to Alabama A&M, and now third and forever for the Bulldogs. Glass has the man Gardner, and Gardner slips. And that'll bring up fourth down. And that was such a promising drive for A&M, and they were inside the 10, and now they're probably going to have to punt it away. They're thinking about going oh, for they're this. Gonna perhaps going for it on fourth and 34, maybe try to draw them off sides. Yeah, if you kick it into know. the end zone, you, get you, a little bit closer. you gain you know, 15 yards, and maybe they like the look that they saw there. They're going to hold off. They're going to. That was a hurt player there. That was interesting. They were getting ready to take a delay of game, but then there was an injured Hornet down on the field. Looks like that, that Aaron Pope. Yes, that's Aaron Pope, Richard Jr. out of Cleveland, Ohio. And then that just tells you the aggressive nature of Connell Mayer. It's fourth and 34, and he's thinking about it. <laughs> he's thinking about going for it. Offensive-minded guy. I like what you said earlier, a little bit disappointing into this drive for Alabama A&M. They had the big plays and were moving the ball down the field. You can see Maynard on the sideline talking to his old lineman, A&M, outscored 
Alabama State in the second half, 14 nothing. Jordan Bentley has been the one that they can rely on all ball game long. 27 rushes, 135 yards, and a pair of TDs. Colton Adams also having a career game. So Corey back to try to pooch it, maybe pin Alabama State. And they'll do it inside their 15-yard line. We'll come back, 7.55 to go, tie ball game. We've had in years. With over 50,000 five-star reviews, it's no wonder Casper is America's number one rated mattress. ESPN College Football is presented by McDonald's and in part by Ice Cold Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. Several who have made it to the NFL have played in this ball game. The last to do it was Titus Howard in last year's game, a first round draft pick that picked up by the Houston, Texas. We're, we're missing some more names there. You know me. <laughs> Some of Jay, the guys that have done it. Uh, I knew Tavares Jackson had to be. That's what I was looking for. Tavares Jackson, the quarterback. Crowell, forgot about that. Reggie Barlow. Mm. Yeah, there have been some guys. In classic memories. Good job by our, by our crew there. Spot on. I thought I was going to catch him slipping. <laughs> this has been a pathway for many to the NFL to be able to play in this game, the 78th meeting between these two teams. Double clutch there out to Michael Jefferson and coming up quickly for the Bulldogs. That was Mike Mills, pick up a five. Just over seven to go from the Magic City Classic. 21 all. The Bulldogs have found the end zone twice this quarter. Or rather this half. And Alabama State spends a timeout on timeout. third and three. Alabama State. Now let's take a look at bringing the flavor brought to you by McDonald's. Jay, there's so much to choose from, but in your eyes, what's your favorite part about the classic? Uh, the the love in the air, the camaraderie, everybody respects each other. What do you say? You know, you get 60,000 people in the stadium, another 60,000 outside the stadium. It's a good time. Davis rolling to his right, trying to find his man, and almost collected in by Tyreek Allen. And we've seen a couple of drops here tonight, Jay. Yeah, directing traffic, Davis on the go, and that's a risky pass, but it was a good pass, and that's one that should have been caught by Tariq Allen. That's the second drop we've seen for Allen in this football game. He's not having a good classic. There's so much that goes into it. You, you said just everything that goes on around it. The coaches have to remind the players the parties and the step shows and the everything tailgate it's not for you got to focus in on the game and we've got a good battle going on here and a defenseless player hit silly hit by alabama a m as a penalty marker comes out romello webster kind of put your hands up and say what <laughs> not necessary there Meanwhile, a 55-yard punt. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, 
number two of the kicking team. That'll be 15 yards from the end of the, end of the kick, be first and 10. Like you said, Tiffany, kind of unnecessary, unwarranted. I mean, plays going, and you'll see number 18 crosses his face, and number two, not as vicious as it looks, but just let him run by you. Game this close, tie ball game, fourth quarter. Can't make those senseless penalties. So Akil Glass and the Bulldogs offense will start from their own 40 yard line. Bentley on the handoff and just runs ahead, nowhere to go. If they come out in that same formation, I'm fairly certain that Connell Maynard is going to take a deep shot with one of his wide receivers. Man-to-man -man coverage across the board. They're stuffing the box against the run. Well, Zabrion Moore, number eight. He's been their big play guy. He's eaten up a lot of yards in a hurry. You got to take advantage of this. This is straight man-to-man -man coverage, one-on-one. -on -one. I'm getting the football to Zabrion Moore. Glass throws it out and just short hops it to Ibrahim. And that's what frustrates you. You got the one-on-one -on -one coverage you want. You don't short hop the ball on a hitch route. Get it to him so he can make a move. But I thought the first mistake was not going down on the southern side of the field, on the right side where he had the same matchup with Moore, who's been the difference maker in this game for him. Zabrion Moore had a couple of big catches. Including a touchdown. The delayed handoff to Jordan Bentley. Pickup of about five. Now third down. That's how you know you've been running. Look at the top of his helmet. I was fourth down. The sticker decals coming off. <laughs> <laughs> Tough nose running there. If you get the victory, we'll give you a little piece of tape up there. Put a little game ball sticker on there. How about that? Well, he's been running hard all game long, Jordan Bentley, but his offense stalls. So the punting unit is out. Kobe Crabb, the returner for Alabama State. Ford at his own 10 yard line. And now Ezra Gray and Duran Bell are back on the field after that 45 yard punt. Well, can Gray find that gear one more time? Duran Bell, the runner, the transfer from South Florida. He's been able to get some big runs to get this offense going. But they haven't put any points on the board quite a while. Ezra Gray, that workhorse in the first half. Nice one two combination at the running back position. They've got to go quite a distance if they want to try and win this football game. Ball's on the 10-yard line for Alabama State. And look at the numbers today for both Gray and Bell. Davis with the incomplete pass to Jefferson. This offense just has not left the locker room in the second half. They exploded in the second quarter, and after that, it's like they've been out of gas. We'll try to step on it as they have to drive 90 yards. Good move, cut. Duran Bell, Duran Bell getting them a little more breathing room. Talk about a good move. Remember, remember the old song? You put your left foot in, you put your left foot out, watch him take it in there, then you take it out, and you do the hokey pokey. Big carry from Duran Bell. Bell walks to the sideline as one of his teammates is down. 
Well, Alabama State has not scored since 9.55 to go in the second quarter. You don't want to see this with DeAndre Brown down. It's getting up, he runs to the sideline, but one of their tackles, and he's the guy who played opposite Titus Howard last year. What a, what a day that was talking about Titus Howard. Hearing his name called, drafted in the first round from Alabama State to the Houston Texans, starting in the NFL. Proud moment for Don Hill Ely and that whole Alabama State athletic program. That ball batted down. But Titus Howard, when, when you watched him play, Jay, and you think about what he was able to do, four-time All-American at Alabama State, and then he's taken by the Texans. I mean, what caliber of an O-lineman was he in your eyes? He, he was good, and I think what helped him a lot was those money games that everybody criticizes, but they went down there at Alabama State when they had Titus Howard played Auburn, and he got his man and held his own. Duran Bell trying to hold his arm, but so is the Bulldogs defense. That was big number 96 coming in, Jalen McGee. The, the highest drafted line pit I've seen from HBC in a while, but was, was he the best? I don't know. I'm a little biased. The most dominating offensive lineman I saw was also not its, out of this conference, and that was Teron Armstead. From UAPB? Yes. Look at this. Four first downs in the second half. That's struggling. They need a big third down conversion here. And Davis able to escape, getting out of the pocket, but he's tracked down by Price, Marquise Price. What a play by Helping Marquise to bring Price. up that fourth down. Marquise Price, he's, he's been all over the field, too. We've called his name a few times today. High energy kind of guy, bringing a physical nature. I mean, that was just the one right there. He was not going to let Davis rush for that first down. Great pursuit to flush him out of the pocket and then track him down and keep him short of the first down. On the punt, Hilaire is back to receive it for the Bulldogs. Good punt from Anthony Craven. Bounces out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you this. You have 242 yep. remaining in this ball game, tied at 21 all, yep. and you have the Swag's leading passer in a keel glass. How do you draw this final drive for the Bulldogs? Well, you're, you're thinking. We just got to get in field goal range. And then once we get in field goal range, which is probably going to be about 30 yards, then we can try to milk the clock a little bit. So, fortunately, they've got it. But let's stop for a minute. Pause right there, Tiff. Hold on. Yeah, give me a do. When it was 21 7. You said it. What did I say? They're going to come back. They're gonna this game's going to get close because that's the classic. And then I also said 21 points was not going to be enough to win this game. So, every now and then I know what I'm talking about, Tiff. <laughs> Toot your own horn. They're starting at midfield. Keel Glass. Sam going to go for it all. Down the sideline. Ibrahim. And pass broken up by Natron Culpepper. That was great pass defense because this was a nice route and a nice throw. Culpepper didn't give up on it. Timed it up. Got the pass break up. And goes down after this one. But again, nice play by Culpepper. Yeah, good job of extending, locating the football and able to Get his hands on it. That's where you like to see the wide receiver come back for the football. That's why they say catch it at its highest point. But that's just a good job of pass coverage. Pepper now down after using that great length to break up that pass. Looks like that's just a cramp. They're going to need to get him back in there. You see, Alabama ain't in their mindset. They were going for the home run ball, the knockout blow early. I would like to see Jordan Bentley carry the ball on first down and second down. Eat up a little clock, put yourself in field goal position, possibly. Spencer Corey is long of the season from 39 yards.
Culpepper able to run off. Again, you want to find number one on the field in Jordan Bentley and number eight, Zabrion Moore. They have been the playmakers on offense for AM. Glass hands it off to Jordan Bentley. And Bentley, who has had some what tough run. hard nose running up ahead. Is he playing like a oh, senior yeah. in oh. his last class? Oh, yeah. He wants it. He would, wants it all. Would he not said, give it down. to me. Oh, he wouldn't go down. Hard nose running. No huddle. Got to pick up two. Jordan Bentley says, that's fine. I got you. Same play where they pull the guard around, and that's just smash mouth. You like to see seniors play well in their final classic. They give it. To Jordan Bentley, again, who they call like a second quarterback on uh, this ball club. A great student athlete, as we mentioned, trying to push the pile ahead. I mean, again, he, he, he's just not easy to bring down. Keeps the leg is going. And low center of gravity, strong. Those would be the words I would use to describe Bentley. Not a blazer, but a strong runner. 150 yards on the ground. For the Bulldogs running back. Now they're loading the box, so right now you need the lead passer to swack to complete some passes. Instead, they give it to Bentley, and Bentley trying to find a crease, and once more, Jordan Bentley. <laughs> I love the spirit of this young man. He, they wanted to get him going early. And you want to talk about bringing everybody in the box. Jordan Bentley uh, says, okay. Look, look at all these people less than five yards from the line of scrimmage. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're like, you're not going to run the football. <laughs> They're crowd the line of scrimmage. That's when you need your quarterback, Akil Glass, to complete some passes for you to soften up the defense and create some running lanes. Alabama A&M takes the timeout. They have two remaining Alabama State with one, but under a minute to go here. And you want to know, they were down 14 coming out of the locker room, but then defense sparked them. Yeah, big interception by inside linebacker Quintrales Kelly. And then they capitalized off it. They started going to the Jordan Bentley show a little bit more, give him the football, let him finish off some drive. Keel Glass mixed in a couple throws in there, but really do think it was Bentley carrying this team on his back. Good job by Glass. Right now they've got the ball. The third down and short in Hornet territory. Quarles in the backfield instead of Bentley. And a flag. That's a five-yard penalty, third down. Minimal mistake from Ibrahim, and you hate to see that coming out of a timeout if you're Connell Maynard. Yeah, freshman mistake. You're the wide receiver on the play that's going away from you. Well, it was third and three, now becomes third and eight. Pretty much ensuring that you got to throw the football. Glass back to pass and the pressure comes from the backside. The Bulldogs with a big stop there. Devin Booker, the senior out of Cincinnati. They tried to do the double move. It was a sluggo. They're going to bring the pressure from the outside. He's doing the pump fake and doesn't see the outside blitz coming from Devin Booker from his linebacker position. And fourth down, 15 from the 45. Bulldogs have not converted 0 for 1 today. And Alabama State taking their final timeout of this ballgame. 
and that was that was a good job there for Alabama to make them think you're going for it so they don't call a timeout right away and try to get together a last minute drive they were letting the clock tick down wind down and they would have been content with the pooch punt and so we've seen already the last couple of games we've covered in the swag <laughs> you know regulation just is not enough you go back to last weekend jackson state winning in overtime against mississippi valley state and then doing it again on the road once more this past thursday at prairie view a and m jackson state that's a team to watch out for that's a team to watch out for they've had a disastrous start high expectations but They've won two consecutive conference games. The defense is starting to step up. They've got some playmakers at offense. Don't count out the Tigers yet. Whistles blowing again and a timeout from Alabama A&M. Look like Connell Maynard is livid right now. Yeah, well, trying to solidify this. Take a look at kind of what's at stake here a little bit. So, talk about the been some updates now. We can update. So, Alcorn, impressive victory today. Florida A&M with a win. A&T with a shellacking of Howard. Bethune Cookman goes down at home versus. South Carolina State on their homecoming. Southern University with a game going on. But they lose to all core. On the punt, it goes out of bounds. Six seconds to go in regulation. What is it, Jay? What is it about? These swag teams. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you get what you pay for. No, they put on a show now. It, 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 it's a good show. You enjoy yourself. And look, this is what you want to see out of a rivalry game. Alabama A&M gets on the board first, scores on their second drive, and then goes quiet until this second half. Alabama State was holding to a lead, and that was not enough. So all zeros on the game clock. And we're moving to overtime, folks, from the Magic City Classic. Jay, we, we, we saw some, some funky weather earlier. Now it's all clear, and we get to see an extra period of play. Coin toss, and look, each goes. On offense, you'll start from the 25-yard line. The first two overtimes, you can answer on the second one. You have to go for two. Of course, if we get that far. Hey, don't. don't. <laughs> hey, it's football, so I like more football, right. the better Bring for me. On. I like that. You know, you're thinking, who's got the momentum going into overtime? And I think it, it goes to Alabama A&M. Their offense put up points in the second half where Alabama State their offense can't get out of the way of themselves right now, so ball security is going to be a key as well. Don't want to see the game end. The turnover, any turnover in overtime is pretty much a game killer. But look, Alabama A&M had a chance to close this thing out in regulation. They had wonderful field position starting at the 50. They were moving down, and then penalties pushed them back. Going toss at midfield. Oops. This will be the first overtime game for Alabama State. If you remember back just a few weeks ago, back on October 5th, Alabama A&M fell to Texas Southern in overtime. So Alabama State won the toss 
Alabama State has won. Alabama State won the toss. They've elected to play defense. Alabama A&M has elected to play on this end of the field. We'll see how this shakes out, the conclusion on the other side. Come back with us to Birmingham. Donald Hill Ely won the toss. His team is electing to play defense in the overtime period. Jay Walker, Tiffany Green with you from Legion Field. Akeel Glass hands it off to Jordan Bentley. Bentley, who's still on his feet, and Bentley is finally wrapped up and brought down by Joshua Hill, a pickup of five. A really great job by Alabama A&M using their best player, their person that they've relied on throughout his four-year career, Jordan Bentley, and he's really stepped up his game here in this second half, making the first tackler miss on a regular basis. They go to Bentley again, and Bentley says, continue to give me the ball. Jordan Bentley brought down by Bubba Adams, but, I mean, he's had a fantastic ball game. Two of the three touchdowns have come off of his runs. Carrying would-be tacklers with him. It's disheartening for Alabama State because they've been in a run-stopping defense, but the adjustment's been made. They stopped running up the middle. They started running Bentley more on the outside off tackle, and they've had success. Bentley already with 170 yards and just lowers his head and plows forward. Man, now look at that. Look at that tape. They've got bodies in there, but I mean, look at this. Is this targeting? <laughs> Watch <laughs> Bentley. When he gets there, he's going to lower that helmet. <laughs> Woo! Just driving forward. Jordan Bentley just continues to lose <laughs> the stickers <laughs> on the top of his helmet. He says, I don't mind. I don't mind at all. Continue. Defeat Jordan Bentley on the inside, outside for the score. Four rushes, 25 yards. It was all Jordan Bentley. Get that man a new sticker. He deserved it. <laughs> Hardcore running. And it was Bentley left, Bentley right, Bentley up the middle. And finally, Bentley in the end zone. He cruises in for the score, and look, they have been riding him all game long. What a luxury to have Jordan Bentley. Three touchdowns today for the senior in his final Magic City Classic. And if somebody's going to get this open to the end zone, let's give him credit how he got there. And that is Robert Samuel. Watch him win his battle. Gets his hands on the outside linebacker. Trevor Goodrum, Bentley sees it, comes to sprint to the end zone. Well, he had a great performance last year, but he topped it. He leveled up today 183 yards, and AM, he gave them their first points since 9.55 to go back in the second quarter. And if you're a senior, that's how you class it. 35 carries, three TDs. Now let's see if the defense can hold on and seal the deal. We'll see how Alabama State answers now on offense. The handoff to Ezra Gray. Gray continuing to bounce and staying on his feet. A pickup of a few, probably about four there. Well, we saw Jordan Bentley do it for AM with the hardest worker for Alabama State so far has been Ezra Gray. See if he can match the success that Bentley had. Gray again following to the right side. Talasian Farmer was his lead blocker who came out of the backfield as well. Brought down by Armani Holloway. Good job of showing the speed. Attacking the perimeter for Ezra Gray. Three to go here on third down. Rather four. Davis with the pass finds Michael 
Jefferson inside the five and a fresh set of downs. Joe Blackwell's got guts because nothing in that situation says you throw the football. They only had six men in the box defending. You could have run effectively to pick up the first down, but they go for the strike. And Kadari, Kadarius Davis comes through with a huge completion to Michael Jefferson. Jefferson, their big wide receiver, and now first and goal from the two. Going out to his right, Collins' number the entire way, but he's tracked down. Good Whoa. defense by Marcus Cushion. And ouch, if you're Alabama State. That hurts on first and goal from the two-yard line, and this is a quarterback sweep trying to get around to the edge. And a good job by Alabama State. I'm sorry, Alabama A&M chasing that down from inside out. So a loss of eight on the play. Ball spotted at the 10. Dwayne Bell and Bell is brought down by Marquise Price. And you can see him pumped up after the play. Alabama A&M. Can sense something special might happen, but two more downs to go for state You don't have to throw it in the end zone Try to find some type of crossing route If you throw it short, which gives your receiver an opportunity to make the catch and run into the end zone get you close Curious to see if Granville Eastman decides to blitz down here in the red zone Third goal from the 10. Davis moving, has a lot of room. He can take off if he wants to, and he does. Near the end zone. Whoa. Touchdown. How did he stay in bounds? You got to take another look at that one, Jay, because, boy, was he ever close going down the sideline trying to reach out for the pylon. Let's see. Let's take a look. Nice move. Gets inside out. Steps out. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's Is that the four? Looks like on yeah. the four. <laughs> you see some excitement from Alabama A&M as they show it on the Jumbotron. That. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you not call that? So that call is likely to be reversed. It was touchdown ruling on the field, but he stepped out at about the four yard line. So this is what you do. You use this situation almost like a timeout. They're reviewing it. After further review, the runner stepped out at the four yard line. Therefore, it'll be fourth and goal. For Alabama State at the four yard line. So in this time, Joe Blackwell is talking to his team. What do you do? You, you dial up your play right away. So they did it. They're treating this like a timeout. What they need to do is hurry up and get on the field because they're going to start that clock. But you dial up the plays here. You have what you call short yardage plays. And what we've seen Davis do, we saw the athleticism there on the run. You don't do anything that keeps him trapped in the pocket. He doesn't take a sack if you're the quarterback. You're saying, worst case scenario, I'm throwing this ball somewhere. Take your time. Look for your best matchup pre-snap read. It's man-to-man -man coverage across the board, which tells me they're probably going to blitz one of those linebackers. Empty backfield. Look out for number 19. Connell Maynard running down to the official to call the timeout. Prior to the snap, Alabama A&M calls timeout. <laughs> he went all the way down there trying to call the timeout. The back of the end zone. Talk about an excellent golfer, fantastic quarterback. He was a little sprinter there. <laughs> and if I'm Alabama A&M, 
The guy who's had the most success against me today is number 19, Michael Jefferson. Find where he is on the field. And Jefferson's a big target, so what you want to do is come up with a formation in which you can basically assure him one-on-one -on -one coverage. And it may be that time when you go for that jump ball. A little surprise they didn't have anybody in motion out of that empty set. You have to, you can't just come out, line up, and beat them. You have to get some type of exchange where you fake a motion going across the formation. And I don't think you just come out, line up, and call the play. Jefferson already with a couple of TDs to the top of your screen. Davis with time. Going for it. Gets the touchdown. That's Tyreek Allen redeeming himself after a couple of drop -ins, drops earlier today in this ball game. Coming up with the big one in overtime. How do you give up? An out route to the slot receiver down on the goal line. They didn't even have to run a pick play. This is him here. This is just this is just out route. Cleared out. Bam. Why are you dropping? But you, why are you dropping? And once again, you know who that is? That's number 45, Denzel Davis, who they picked on today several occasions, and that was a big the important extra point. <laughs> <laughs> Let's run that back. Let's do it again, Jay. Double <laughs> overtime. Woo. The chain hangs on the neck of Allen. And again, we mentioned a couple of opportunities Tyree Allen had, and he missed them. I thought this was a huge one. They were up 21-7 with a chance to go up 28-7. He dropped one there, and then also comes back big with the redemption for the touchdown. That's what it's all about. That's college athletics. Forget about the last play. You live for the next play. And huge catch for Allen. Magic City Classic, full of fun festivities and a fight to the finish here from Legion Field. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, Alabama State, after that score, will now come back onto the field and start this double overtime. Alabama A&M was one play away from winning consecutive classics. They fall short, give up a touchdown on fourth and goal from the four. Now the defense has to forget about that and get right back to work. They hand it off to Ezra Gray. Gray going along that right side, and Gray gets to about the 19. Yeah. What's today? Yeah. I mean, they have just been <laughs> the glue for both offenses. Ezra Gray, Duran Bell, Jordan Bentley. Bad snap picked up. Gray says, I'm going to make a little something out of nothing. That'll move the chains. A little bowling. Ball never comes up, get in front of it. Good job by Davis getting the ball to Gray, making a quick decision. And still a little bit surprised at how vanilla the defense is for Alabama A&M. They're playing two safeties high and allowing Alabama State to win the number count in the box at the line of scrimmage. Gray. Rather, Davis. So, Davis, you know, Kaderis Davis, we talked about it earlier in the broadcast, and we'll continue to bring it up here, is the fact that, you know, this is his first game back since going down against Alcorn, injured his back. But here in, in this moment, and everyone may be kind of focusing in on Gray and, and Bell. Do you want to see him take on a little bit more? In the running moment? game, I yeah, think he could yeah. be that running game. And that last play didn't work for him, but if something's not there, we've seen this athleticism where he can take off and pick up big yards with his legs. 
This time, elects to put it in the air, has a man! Did he bring it in? It's Jahad Baker, and Jahad ba Booker, excuse me. They call it a touchdown! I thought his momentum was carrying him out. He completed the pass, but it looked like he may have been at the back of the end zone. And there may not be any good views on this either. That's the furthest point of the stadium to get a good look at. And I thought he might have thrown it too far up the field, thrown it out of the end zone. He's open early. That's a soft spot. Give it to him. That's a touchdown. It's a bang-bang play, but that's the catch. The yep. foot's in bounds. That's a touchdown. Wow. Big answer by Booker and Davis. We were talking about Davis and how he's just come back. But think about a year ago, he comes to this football game, and while he's on the bus coming to the stadium, found out that his grandmother passed away, didn't play well, with an opportunity for redemption. And that was a nice throw. Congratulations to that young man. The extra point is good, 35-28, and another look at that great throw from Kaderis Davis. Made up his mind, locked in on a receiver, and the safety comes over a little bit too late. Desmond Fletcher, number 40, and that was just too free of release to allow Booker. The quarterback never did the reroute. Really puts a lot of pressure on your safety to cover a lot of ground. Excellent catch extension by Booker catching him in stride gets that foot down And the key was he caught it cleanly mm -hmm. if he bobbles that ball at all that foot would have been off the ground out of the end zone Now the Hornets with an opportunity to try and protect the lead in overtime Last time we saw Jordan Bentley in overtime four rushes 25 yards and a TD Keel Glass gets rid of it and just short of his receiver as he saw a ton of pressure in his face. Nicholas Terry was one to bring the heat to Glass. And with the incompletion on first down, I don't know how much more of a weapon Jordan Bentley becomes for this next couple plays for well, the way he's been running the football Jay I know you're saying conventional wisdom but Jordan Bentley didn't pick up much there yeah they, they crowded the box on him and they've had success doing that running against big fronts but there goes big Christian Clark making a play again you got to use the number one pass offense in the conference right now got two plays to pick up 10 yards And is there a matchup you're looking for, Jay? It's been more. Number eight. Three, three more. Top of your screen. He's open. Glass has a man wide open. Guess who it is? Sabre and Moore. <laughs> that was the easiest touchdown you will ever see. 25 yards. And he was wide open. Nobody within what, like? Nobody guarded him. <laughs> I mean, why? He's here. Nobody guards him. He just runs down the field. They absolutely don't see him. Zabrian Moore with the big playability all game long. This could get interesting. Yeah. Connell made a round down the sideline, called timeout. Timeout. Is he I'm going for the him. win? Now, now hear me on this, Jay. If you are able to make the extra point, you go into the third overtime, you have to go for two anyway. Well, why not settle and just try to live? Do you like that thinking? Aggressive mind mindset, I know, from Connell Maynard. You have to go for two, but you have to score first in yeah. order to go for two. That might have been something formation-wise. I don't see the offense out there on the field, so maybe he just wants to make sure that that extra point wasn't blocked. In that case, that was a very smart move because we've seen this game end on missed field goals and blocked extra points. I'm getting where they only had 10 players on the field. Spencer Corey 
for the point after attempt. It's up and good. Well, Akil Glass, you said he had to step up the number one passing offense, and here they go. I mean, just bought some time. They moved the pocket. I'm sure they weren't. Oh, he almost dropped that ball. He was, he was so open, he almost dropped it. It almost went right through his legs. Woo! <laughs> Crazy, crazy. More importantly, he held on to it. A third overtime from the Magic City Classic. This Who's hype? You hype, Jay? Oh, this is hype. This is becoming a classic classic. <laughs> Triple overtime classic. That post-game tailgate that we talked about, that's going to have to stay on hold for a little while. <laughs> Just when you thought third and ten was looking like an uphill battle, they get the score tied up, and we go to the third OT. Well, they're not tired. <laughs> Last six seasons, they have flip-flop who wins this game. Alabama State back in 2013 and again in 15. So they win in the odd years and Alabama a and wins in the even years, or at least that's the way it's been over the last six. So you wonder, will it play out the string? And I'm sure Coach Don Hill Ely for Alabama State hopes that's the case. He won in his first year as interim head coach and then he saw Connell Maynard do the same last year in his debut season and more importantly Jay I mean yes this is an important game and it's a rivalry game and you want to win this one but you also want to stay alive trying to contend for a swag title it could be considered an elimination game. Whoever loses this football game will have two losses in conference. It'll be a tough pill to swallow. Let's get it going with this third overtime. Bentley. They hand it off to their workhorse all game long. Jordan Bentley picks up about a yard, a long yard. Once again, big number 94, Christian Clark, nose tackle. Big man, 380-pound nose tackles, played a good football game here. Flash pitches it to Bentley. Bentley with some space, good blocking up ahead. And the first down pushed out by Devin Booker. And on that option, great blocking downfield, as you mentioned, on the option pitch. Right side of your screen, you're going to see the tight end, Anthony Howard, go out there. I'm sorry, it's Kendrick Johnson. Do a good job of turning the defensive back, number 22, inside out, freeing Bentley. 13-yard pickup, fresh set of downs. They try to do it again this time. Glass keeps it, and he's stuck. And that's a good job by the by the quarterback Akil Glass. If it's not there, they surprise you. Just hold on to the football. Try and get as close to the line of scrimmage as possible. Alabama State player down. Looks like he might be cramping. That's Booker. It's been a it's been a long <laughs> ball game, Jay. It has been a long one. And started off the game with bad playing conditions with the rain coming. And in the second half, when the second half, the clouds cleared up and Alabama a and was able to use their passing attack with a dash or a heavy dose of Jordan Bentley to control the game. And then in overtime, we've seen, in both overtimes, we've seen each team match each other on offense.
So Booker able to get up and trot to the sideline. We saw both teams score a touchdown. On both of their overtime possessions. Here's Jordan Bentley. Jordan Bentley moving forward. I just love the way he turns ahead, leans, gets all those extra yards, and you, you're thinking, okay, I got him, no problem. No, he's like, I'm going to drag you with me. Yeah, you think he's going down, and they're tackling him a little bit high, and he's keeping the legs turning, getting that forward lean, fighting for every yard he can on every carry. He's closing in on a 200-yard performance. On third and five, Glass taking his time, has Jordan Bentley once again! Bulldogs with a touchdown! Three touchdowns for Jordan Bentley, and now a and in this third overtime, you have to go for two. position looking in the backfield leaves Bentley wide open after starting out quickly it took a while for Akil Glass to heat up but he's made some critical throws when he's needed to oh now they got to call a timeout because they were going to get a delay a game which would have been big penalty in that situation but you were saying Akil Glass did a good job of rebounding in the second half. Probably one of the worst halves of football he had in the first quarter. And he turned it on and he's made some crucial throws for Coach Maynard. Just remind our viewers how we got here in this overtime period. Jordan Bentley in the first OT with a touchdown, answering right back on the other side were the Hornets as it was Tyreek Allen. On fourth down. <laughs> and in the second overtime, Hornets started out first, and Davis continuing to make the big passes. This time it's Jahad Booker. Back the other way, Akil Glass finds a wide open Zabrian Moore. And Zabrian Moore helps put him here. They pitch it to Jordan Bentley. Bentley won't be denied in for the two point conversion. All you have to do is just give it to number one. Nice play with the shovel pass. Fake a little sprint, take two steps to your right. Toss it forward, and you know the way that Bentley's been bouncing off of Hornet defenders. He was not going to be denied getting into the end zone. They have ridden their big time back all game long. The six-yard TD catch, his first reception of the day. Then he converts for two points and Jordan Bentley no matter how this ends you have got to tip your hat to that young man a four-year player in this Alabama a and program good job Jordan here's Kadaris Davis the Hornets will slip step from Michael Jefferson Jefferson he's got some shake on him for him to be such a tall receiver, you see the fast twitch muscles, the ability to change directions. 6'3", 194 pounds, sophomore from Mobile, Alabama, but he's got a bright future hit up. Gray on the carry, and Gray moves ahead. Brought down by Breon Austin, pickup of about three. Brings up third down. 
and short. Using that combination, bringing a fullback in. Number 32, Tallison Farmer, acts as a lead blocker for Gray. Taking his time, four to go on the play clock. Gray trying to make some cuts. And a big stop from the Bulldogs defense. Now it's fourth down. Mar Armani Holloway was in on that play. Holloway, one of the, the Holloway boys on the team, twin mm -hmm. brother. He's on the football team as well, Amari Holloway. And Alabama State needs to come up with at least a yard. Davis throwing it across the middle. Touchdown! Alabama State likes to find Tyreek Allen in this OT period, huh, Jay? Throwing the ball on fourth down, but that was the perfect <laughs> call when they bring a double A-gap blitz, bringing both inside linebackers. You see both of these backers here are going to shoot. You find the wide receiver that's replacing them. They've got a built-in slant route. Watch him think. He thought the official was going to be the tackler. Put a move on him and then got to the end zone. Nice recognition by Davis delivering a catchable ball in stride. And Tyreek Allen, who took over that starting role from Jeremiah Hickson, who was out with injury and the senior out of San Antonio, Texas, Coming up with a couple of key receptions in this overtime period. Now right, let's see what Joe Blackwell can dial up. The touchdown was nice. You know you needed that. But you also need to come up with a two-point conversion, another three-yard play. This has become a shootout here from Birmingham, Alabama. And who do you go to? Who do you, who do you call on? I stick with the empty backfield, spread formation, five, five receivers there. But obviously you see Gray coming in and not listening to me at all. Or maybe flank him out, but you have to find a matchup, one-on-one -on -one matchup. And there's Gray in the slot to the bottom of your screen. Davis trying to go quickly, and it's batted down. Alabama A&M for the second year in a row wins the Magic City Classic. Desmond Fletcher coming up with the big pass breakup, the deflection from the senior. And Bulldogs fans celebrate. It was a classic. It was a classic, and in the end, Desmond Fletcher defends the slant route on the two-point conversion. Back-to-back -back wins for Connell Maynard in the Magic City Classic. Jordan Bentley, what a performance by this young man. Help will his team to victory every time they needed him he came through they're gonna try and get the slant route and a good job of playing defense i was wondering if he might have gotten there a little bit early the ball was thrown behind a little bit because of the pressure coming up the middle and alabama a m Holds on for the victory. Let me tell you, we talked about Jordan Bentley, Akil Glass as well. They like to step it up on the big stage. Look at the number of touchdowns, 13 combined between the two. Of course, Bentley has a little more time ahead of his uh, sophomore quarter, excuse me, junior quarterback, but check this out. 
When the lights are bright, they go to Bentley or Glass. But those guys get it done. Back-to-back -back victories for the Bulldogs in the Classic. And it was a memorable one for sure in the 78th meeting. Triple overtime to decide it for Jay Walker. I'm Tiffany Green saying so long from Birmingham.